this evening. So uh, Jody and I are forming the quorum. And the first thing on the agenda are minutes. Uh, the minutes of October 2nd, uh, it was just Mike and I who were at that meeting, so we'll table, table those. Did you have any issues on the October 6th? That was the, the workshop meeting. To your workshop meeting, right? I wasn't there. Is that mm -hmm. what October 6th was? Yeah, I was, I was just a observer. Ah, uh, that's right, so that's also Mike. That's I was not, still sleeping. Yeah, okay, sorry, you're right. So I had a great meeting. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll make it the two of us. Okay, uh, community input. Did you want to speak to us about something? I wanted to ask you about the minutes. Now, the October 2nd minutes, I don't have a draft of them. He just sent them to me, so I will send them to you. And if he, I assume he sent them to Michael as well. I'll, I'll make sure you get a copy. Let me make that note. Okay. Thank you for that. Sir, did you want to speak to us? Yeah. Uh, not, my name is Dan Duncan, and I've been working with Brian Durgeon on that 224 Sumsworth Road in Arlington. And he has his construction company there, and we've been doing a little bit of light automotive uh, there in the last few months and stuff. And what I was trying to do is uh, to get a sign. I was trying to get my state of the inspection license over there, and part of the uh, prerequisites is to have a sign. For the, for the, uh, the city of New Hampshire, and uh, so I talked to a gentleman last two Tuesdays ago. I think on the second, it was at the planning board meeting. Okay. And he had recommended me to come to tonight's meeting, and that they were going to try to set me up with Tom Clark to go there and take a look at it and stuff. So. Yeah. So so our our planning expert is not here who, who better understands some of the zoning requirements but okay. you need to the sign is probably not the first thing we need to be thinking about the first thing we need to be thinking about is whether that activity is allowed in the in whatever piece of property that you're, you're okay. talking about yep. and so Tom who's our building inspector uh, code enforcement officer and all those things Tom Clark would be able to help you with that okay so he um, he can be reached. You can either try phone calling him, or we can give you his email. Okay. Sure. Um, e either or, I, I would. I would yeah. Try. Well, I would try. I would do email. He doesn't have. You know, he's he works part time, this? part time, part time. Yeah. Okay. He works for us. He don't long works for the city of Dover. If that's what you were about oh, to yeah. say. Oh yeah. Well, when yeah, he retired. Oh, good for him. Yes, good that's what we say too. Good for him. And because of that, he he had always been our part time. But he was so busy with Dover that now he really, really do get, you know, some, you know, four, four hours or so from him every week. Okay. But if you have a uh, piece of paper, I'm going to just send him an email for you. Do you have his email? Yep. Yeah. Oh. Oh, well, she's more efficient than I. <laughs> but it's on. Awesome. Well, should you give him Bill? Dan Pepin. Pepin. Because yeah. I set up that Dan alias Dan now. Him. Yep. Bill. Okay. Oh, I didn't do that. Yeah, it's easy to remember. And it will be useful no matter who our building inspector is. Thank you. So it's build at rollinsford.nh.us. Okay. And that's Tom's. And Dan, do you have a phone number? I do. Um, you can write it down if you don't want to put it on video. Yeah, that's, that would be, that's, Please. What, I, that's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes forget we're rolling. Yeah. And I'll send him an email. And, uh, copy, uh, copy all of us too, so Mike can see what. Okay. Because uh, he might have some some things to say about that. Okay. So, well, good, good luck. I mean, I, you. I I don't know what else to say because I don't know myself what all of the ins and outs are of something like that. But before the sign comes, you know whether or not you were allowed to do that kind of activity in that okay. in that location, and Tom should be able to help you with that. And, Awesome. Thank you very okay. much. Well, thank you very much. Have a nice night. Nice you too. All right. Yes, Nancy. I have a question about building permits. Yes. I just had my generator installed, and the electrician was told that the $90 was for electrical, but nobody was going to come and check it. What do you mean nobody was going to come? Nobody check? was going to come check the electrical, and that's what he was assuming that the, the building permit was being charged for.
I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. I was just curious because I, it was a $90 charge and he was, a, he was assuming he would have to call and make an appointment for the, someone to come out and check for the electrical as to being charged for electrical for my generator. And if it were just being charged as normal, what would it be? It's it's huh? Because it's electrical. They, they list it under $90 as an electrical. So that's why I was just curious. Yep. Well, here, I'll, I'll check with Tom and I'll okay. copy you, okay? Mm-hmm. Haven't got the propane in, but we got the generator there. <laughs> Do we have we have the building permit, don't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And we did charge you ninety bucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you. <laughs> and so. <laughs> and so, you want to know whether somebody's coming out to inspect it? Yeah. I I think what I want to know is this, is the building permit because I put the generator in, or is the building permit for the electrical? I think for me, I'm trying to remember, of course, I did find out, as you know, after the fact. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a good, uh, <laughs> I really can't say because, you know, I didn't know myself that I was supposed to have a building permit, but I'll, I'll check and see what. That, I was just curious. Okay. That was all. My electrician asked me, that's all. Okay, excellent. All right, so we'll go to department head business, and I want to welcome George Gilmet, our new road agent here, and he has given us uh, something. Where's my copy? Uh, and I think this is, if you want to just come up, you can sit and chat. We can have a conversation about some of the things that you observed or discovered or things that we can think we might be able to help with, et cetera, et cetera. I would love to have you start by just giving a synopsis of, of this. Okay. I, you all know I haven't been here long, but I have uh, spoke with a few people uh, reference a few items, and also uh, I understand that they had not received any uh, application for any part-time plow people or whatever. Uh, no. I'm understanding that uh, every department around have an issue trying to get people, people looking to get some guaranteed hours. And, uh, and after being around town and seeing projects that could be done in-house, I believe prior to probably hiring a full-time second person, because part-time people we have don't want to plow. And a full-time second person in here with a CDL license not only is uh, a safety issue, I mean, it, it, it eliminate, it, you have somebody around all the time in case someone does get hurt, and most projects require a couple people to do. I know it's not budget time, but I believe getting uh, that second person now would be get. Uh, so your hope is that if we if we advertise now, we would stand a better chance of finding somebody with a CDL license if we were hiring that person full time correct. or absolutely over here. You really think we'd, we'd, be, we'd, be, we'd be able to do that? I have a candidate. You do? That would be interested in golf and some mechanical experience. And I've heard whispers of people in the spot. Who would be interested in applying for a full time job if we did sooner rather than later? Mm -hmm. I think you'll have a better chance of getting somebody in here full time sooner. I mean, as long as they can get some guaranteed hours, and then you're going to get personal. Require a CDL license as you only use your hire. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so then we'd still have Mike Dion as a non CDL. Well, he would be the. Will, and you'll need a. And we'll, we'll still need. We'll sti we, should, right. we still should be looking. Because Absolutely. They think, Absolutely. I know that the board felt that having three people was, you know, really not sufficient because right. we couldn't, you know, we Absolutely. couldn't provide sufficient. Breaks and, and I have a, I got a couple of guys with OCDL that are still interested in coming. What some of the work in, and uh, I'll be willing to come back and help out if they can. Okay. 
So the reason I was smiling when you brought that up is, of course, this is a budgetary issue, and this right. is going to send me back to the books <laughs> sooner rather than later to see if, if we can at all work this out. But I, I, I can at least do the math. Right. And, you know, I, 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 I and I would say we should still be beating the bushes looking for just plain absolutely. CDLs. Yep. And absolutely. in the meantime, I'll do the math and see what we can do. Like I said, I, I know other departments have had issues what? with Yes. Let me just check in with my fellow board member. Your your opinion on this? Just absolutely. So yeah. we also have, <laughs> on on that note, the day that George started, and it was before you actually started, um, we got an email from me who was on our hiring committee, and and I just reported it to you. Oh, that I saw that. Yeah. About I haven't responded to him, but I thanked him for it. About I want to having another. Full timer and the reasons and what you're looking for in that person and so forth, and I forwarded it on to you. Too. Okay. So. All right. So. That. I have a homework assignment, but I'm feeling really beleaguered. It's like this year's budget, next year's budget. I've got somebody <laughs> yanking on me for like a, a something for the newsletter. <laughs> See? <laughs> I, I'm not coming that in here trying, trying, trying to <laughs> spend your money. <laughs> I'm thinking it's things that. We, we, appre we appreciate that. You know, we do appreciate, and and just just for the public record, there was a time there was a full time assistant. There was a time, and I think, I think that time ended perhaps with the recession. You know, in two thousand eight. That's when I'm thinking things happened. And, uh, because I, I, I'm just going to use my previous employer. We had a four person crew. However, one was a mechanic, one was a foreman. So ninety nine percent of the time, there was two of us doing ninety percent of the work. Plus, we bring in part timers when we need it, and you can get a lot of stuff done, even you know, with the two. Uh, the uh, signs, you know, if you're working with step ladders, you you know, you should have a spotter or at least somebody there. I mean, it's, there isn't too many jobs in this business that should be done with a person. And that's one reason why I wanted to bring it up. Thank you. As the budget being planned or what have you. Well, it makes a difference if we thought. I mean, we're we're in desperate need of somebody with a commercial license. If the board is feeling that the time is here to hire a full-time person, now we're just talking about the difference between so <laughs> between next April and now, right? <laughs> All right. Well, Jody, Jody. Uh, Jody has, uh, what is it, shown her hand. Yeah. <laughs> and I, for me, it's, it's, it, it's strictly, uh, the first thing is just budgetary. What does it do for our budget? So I'm, yeah, let me, I, let I, me work, I understand that. Let me work on that and, and see what happens. Next. Okay. <laughs> I noticed when I came to town there was no pickup trucking house. And cost savings of having a pickup truck over using a dump truck to run around for chase parts or what have you or any other business is, I mean, it's a no-brainer. My thought is, I know you get $20,000 to put aside for a pickup that I was told when I sat down with these people. Well, in today's world, that's probably never going to happen. You might be able to get a half-ton pickup truck that you're not going to get around in the weather. We have just gone... I don't know why it hadn't done it years ago. Is put a utility body, get a utility body on the truck. So we have our equipment with us. I chased past the other day when I came to fix the gutter and stuff. I had to run back to the shop three times. If we had these stuff with us on the truck, we wouldn't be running around for stuff. Uh, I did get a couple rough estimate quotes, so you can have. I'm going to give you a copy of that. So you can put it in the, the budget. Uh, they haven't got a price on the utility body part of it yet. But uh, I know that would, uh, is something I think we should have. It would also give us a backup plug truck if something happened. Yeah, there is there is a state contract that uh, did yeah. you, have you seen the state contract? That's what I called okay. the state okay. deal. The state did deal with today. Yeah. So I know you can get a better, a heck of a lot better deal with the prices he gave, came back with. From the state. If he gave me the state prices, yeah. showed me the original prices. So. A yeah. $40 or $50,000 truck, you're going to get in the ballpark of late, you know, high 30s. 
Yeah, no, it makes a difference to me because first I thought, oh, we're just going to use, just going to use. And that's, not, and that's what I thought too. But in fact, if you look at the state contract and what used trucks are selling for, right. we're better off you, getting. You, can't, you won't get that deal with a youth vehicle. Right. So. Correct. That's why I think it, you know, I'd look into that. I know that you guys have been with, you people have been working on an issue with the bad code. There's something going back where they don't work. And I, I, cause I've used it a few times since I've been here. That machine is not old, is it? No. And people spent an awful heart. lot it of did. money on that. You spent about $110,000. Right, and then you spent several, well, warranty dollars have gone. Warranty dollars. We, we were out of pocket maybe four or five. Right, but if you figure what they spent, that is atrocious. And that machine is not, is not being sold anymore, unfortunately. They stopped making them that year. That was the last year they built that machine. They don't even sell it back over that company anymore. Mm -hmm. So, something you might want to keep on the back burner. I, I think it's 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 a lemon. It's probably going to be a problem, child, the whole time you have it. I I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised. The question is, how expensive a problem, child? You know, if we can. If well, we, if your warranty's up and you spent five thousand, four to out five. Out of pocket now, but was it twenty some odd thousand? Warranty dollars that would go into it. Right, but do it, right, but it's how do we know that those? Oh, it might be fixed. Yeah, yes, right. that's what and I mean. That, so I, I'm not, I can't tell you that. Right. So that's my. I just wanted to bring it up. Yeah. It, yes. You know. Yes. And uh, the 2007 GMC <laughs> truck has it's in a matic, it's clean. It's got very little miles on it, but I was talking with Sam the other day. He says that Sam. is the, the mechanic, the rental yeah. mechanic, clean oh, and over. Okay. Thank and you. he said that truck is overbuilt for what it is. It's got too much equipment on it. It's it's not heavy enough to do the job it's designed to do. It's, they, they well, I recently found out that it was because the person who was going to be driving it didn't have a CDL. We try to sort of trick things, you know? They haven't been with and the trucks are being beat up yeah. way sooner so than they need to be. It's just, you know, I, you I, think I, you're saving money, you think you're yeah, doing the right thing. Right. He said that truck has got, it'd be an ideal truck for a, a contractor because you don't need the CDL. Uh, but to do what you're trying to have that truck do, and, and like if the bill had a small, a little bit smaller truck than that, they did the same thing, put a wing and stuff. These trucks are not designed for that. And again, GMC stopped making those trucks two or three years after that was bought. So <coughs> that's the, the starting to become very difficult to get. So that's the that's the one that that's on the CIP to be changed in 2020. 2020, and that's the one that you said we've got underpriced. Is that correct? Yes, we only have 160 budgeted yeah. for that, and we should have 200. I was guessing with all the bells we just and whistles. The new and we opened the door and it came in just at 200,000. And that's a bigger truck, so it's. So if we put it. be just a little, you know, 180 maybe in that ballpark. All right. Yeah, you have it scheduled for 200. Again, price will go up every year, so. Yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll do something like that. We haven't gotten the inspection back from that truck. Do you suspect it'll make it to 220? I know I, you've I been here four days. It may not make the like that. You don't know that. That's true. You know. Like Sam said, it's got an a small motor in it. It's like it was designed for a CDL driver. So it, it, for a non-CDL. A non-CDL driver, but it's a big truck. That's a big issue. And last year. Making to try and make that truck work harder than what it's designed for. And that's what's costing. That's why the repair costs have been up on it. So we put 90000 away for that last year. Yeah, we've got money. It's in the plan for us to replace it in 2020 at 160. Right. So we need to recalibrate that. Yeah. So, okay. And this is a smaller additive. It's the uh, the lawnmower and stuff. They use that big <coughs> trailer that they bought for us in Stia. That is way too big to be. I mean, it doesn't have the proper tailgate. They're going to put a board to get the unit up. Safety issue for one thing. I'm just wondering about getting a small landscape trailer for a couple thousand dollars that we could all keep the lawnmower 
use that to hover around a lot more. And you can talk to the police chief about. I the, didn't talk to him, okay. but I just thought about what. They just bought a little trailer, but I'm not sure if it's the right size to make a bar. They just bought one. Yeah, for four thousand in the summer. Mm -hmm. Right, but how would we share it? Yes. Is that? Mm -hmm. Is it? What? What do the police use it for? They use it for putting out their signs and things like that. And what is out their signs? Like what do you mean? Their their pylons and oh okay oh I see right 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 signs. Is it, you don't know police officer head. Like that, really? Well, what, okay, yeah, so that's like the Lowe's kind of. It's a small. Yeah. I don't I know talk if it's much. big enough. I think it's. Is it right over it here? should be nothing here somewhere. Eye. I never seen that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's check on that because if 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 we can at least live by for, you know, I for mean, a couple. That's why it's possible this year. I mean, there's just stuff in the things, you know, because that other okay. trail. I mean, you're dragging an extra set of tires around it to the wear out. Using it. Yeah. I mean, to, to put that little machine on that big trailer. It's kind of. <laughs> it's, so it's funny to see. That. So George. Let's okay. see. Now, so um, if I look at this list. If you were to put a priority order on these things, other than the GMC, which which is going to have to be done, I mean that's already on the CIP. So let's that's that's not. We don't have to. How would you rate? How would you prioritize the other four? Are you starting with the employer, employee? Is that what you that want to start? That would be number one. All right. No doubt about it. Okay. Then I would the backhoe. We could probably limp through another year. All right. It doesn't get used. It hasn't been used much. It will get used a lot okay. more because I plan on doing some shoulder work with it and stuff like that. So, okay. uh, I don't know. You no, know, I don't know what happened to it or what was done on it. So I don't know where. Back home. Yeah. Right. We've got Caroline has the full okay, history. I'll, I'll have to see what. They, yeah. I don't know what the history was on it. Yeah. It may be just because it wasn't liked. I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 a, it's an expensive piece of equipment to be a lemon for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So number one is full time employee. Number two. Well, I think I still think the paper truck is in the GMC should go into the CIP. Yeah, we've we've got that already. So it's not a, that's not a landscape trailer. We could figure out some money. All right. Like that, that's not so the full time employee is your number one. Absolutely. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. We hear that the trucks are being inspected as we speak. Yeah, that was a surprise to me. Yeah, it was a surprise to us as well. Uh, and there is some issues with the international. There's a hydraulic leak that needs to be repaired. That's the big one. The big truck. And, that's, and then also the spinner motor for the salter, apparently I was told, is not working on one of them. So that's another item. Wait, that that's not always. That is, the problem with that is it sits in the salt, or just under the salt all the time. I see, so it and corrodes. We've lost them in a year. It's a 90 something dollar item. Oh, 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 it's okay, we're not talking about oh, okay. it. On the, on the spinner part of it. The one okay. under, underneath the truck, I don't know, they have to see it, they can't even give you a price. Okay. So it has to go down, it's got to go to the pump. Roadside mower, we have received the call saying the mower is down. Motor is going in this machine, so he doesn't need to deal with the shear. Uh, I had a thought of calling someone's work to see if they could come in and do the work for us and bill us accordingly. But so I don't know what your thoughts are on that. We have forty-five hundred dollars in the budget for road cycle. Unfortunately, I'm thinking this time of year, then we'll set up the mower again. It's probably not going to happen because we're just spread around the car. The bridge on. We, we are going to take care of the bridge on the whole street Wednesday. We're going to go down. PD said they'll come down and wash traffic, but we're going to trim that stuff up so that clean that one out. There is more roadside more that needs to be done. I, however, I think we could probably get by some next year. All right. I don't so, think there's any big branches or anything that are in the way. You're getting the grass and stuff coming out of the snow yeah. can roll that stuff back. So if we were to, to try to do this on our own, which has been a thought that has come up, Oh, yes. I don't mean right now, I mean 
getting your own room set. How, you know, what, it, what is the, a, a good ballpark price? I, I, have, I never done it. I have to look into it. If it's an item, you can be attached to the bobcat. So? If the machine is designed for high flow, I'm not sure. I'll have to talk about that if you like. Okay. Get some prices for you. It would be helpful because I've got a, I've got a blank, I've got a thing for it in the CIP. And if we thought we wanted to do it in 2018, it's not outside the realm of possibility, but I would we'd need to know what the, you know, what the approximate. I can, have, I can get a hold of them and they yeah. come down and let us know if our machine's capable of doing yeah. it or if not. Yeah. It's, uh, and if not the Bobcat, then we don't have anything else that we can attach a roadside bower to. No. Okay. I don't know if you'd want to be attached ones because you'd probably get one to mount on the, and you're talking a lot bigger dollars to mount one on the back row. Yeah. And, okay. and not knowing if the machine's going to last. Exactly. You know, Good point. Put into that. Yeah. Good point. Uh, stop signs. I've noticed a lot of stop signs in town are not up to the state state, federal standards. I think that budget item should be added or make a little stronger. I've got a price of 30 signs and it's just over $2,000. Okay. Oh, yes. Because he, he was telling me that when you buy in bulk, right now we're buying $85 signs. Yeah. When you buy in bulk, you're saving $15 a sign by buying bulk. So, okay. So, what's a good number to budget? Well, 30 signs will probably. I don't know what your your sign budget was. It was sixteen hundred. And obviously you're not gonna cover all the signs next year. <laughs> I think they said there was thirty signs. There's thirty stop signs now. I mean and then we're not gonna be able to do but we could do like for bulk, we just say, okay, let's do all the stop signs. Right. And that's right. right. So thirty So that would be a little over two thousand. Thirty signs at sixty nine dollars a piece is Two thousand. Yeah, it's about sixty-seven fifty a piece, but then you know whatever. Okay, so and then we need to have something in the budget for for just emergencies. Mm -hmm. Right. We should have a few spaces, and you could probably get away with some of these signs. Probably, you know, on dead end roads, probably wouldn't have to be up to standard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At least not right away. Right off. Yeah. So you, yeah. Have, you know, you should have a couple of signs hanging around in case some car takes one out. Though. Yeah. It does happen. <laughs> So, and the graffiti people. There's that as well. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, shoulder work, I know you. <coughs> it's getting late in the year to do it. I, I know <coughs> some washouts and stuff on Climate Road. The shoulders are too high there, the water's not running off, that's an issue. So, I mean, we could do some shoulder work and grade them down a little bit. I don't think it's something we have to hire out, but it's something we can do with our back home. Mm -hmm. So you've been tootling around then, huh? Doing some inspections. I've been looking around. I've been looking around before I started. I said, well, what am I getting into? So I went to Corral. He pointed out on day one on Woods Run, how we haven't done the, the shoulder work there. And so all the culverts, are, the driveway culverts are filling up with dirt because the shoulder work is too, is coming, is rising as it's not being cleaned out every year. It doesn't have to be done yearly, right. however. And Woods Run's probably never been done. They have cement colors, so I think you're good. You don't have to worry about replacing them, but they, when they get well, plugged up. We, the driveway culverts are not our responsibility. Uh, are you sure about that? Mm -hmm. We're pretty sure about that. Because I know if it creates a water problem, we always have, we end up changing colors. Well, we, I, I don't know how yeah, you feel. Know, this is the know. state of New Hampshire. Okay. I feel, yeah, so I, we have, we, there were reasons why we, we explored this. and. Driveway culverts are the responsibility of the homeowner to maintain. Because if there were no home there, we wouldn't have a culvert. There'd be no driveway culvert. So that exists because there's a home there. And so the town doesn't shoulder the burden of maintaining that culvert. The property owner does. Now, that doesn't mean to say that a town might not do something if it Well, I was just wondering about the shoulders. I mean, if you've got a, a ditch to hold into that road, and that culvert's stopping the water from flowing, and the ditch is maintain whose problem comes out? Well, the ditching would be ours. Okay. I would say the ditching is ours. So not, and it's also true that <clears throat> once a, um, I, I want to be careful how I say this. I mean, the town has to be careful about not 
dramatically changing the relationship between the road and the driveway, the property owner's driveway, because then we might have some responsibility, right? But you know, as far as you know, repaving, I mean, it should that that should be okay. But you know, there's some things that we, obviously we still need to explore as these situations right. come up. Right. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I wouldn't go jumping into anything unless I was sure anyways. But well, that's I'm, why you know, I'm seeing that a lot of these covers are half full, and it's not just one driveway. And that development alone is <clears> is from the sanding of the roads and stuff, and all those things gets washed back into the ditches. Things are filling up. Yeah. I'm not saying, I don't know how much water flows down there. You know, it, it may not even be an issue. But I, I, I seen it. Yeah. And then I seen washouts on Clement Road and stuff. Clement Road, we know about washouts. And some of the shoulders are a little bit higher than the road, and the water's not running, able to run off. It's yeah. going to be dug out a little bit, yeah. up, just repitched. So we, we've heard about that. I haven't heard about water issues on Woods Run, other than Jeff, our prior road yeah. agent, saying, you know, we've lost the crown to the road, and water doesn't sheet it's off. Right. right, and so that's a problem for us trying to maintain the road. It just and wears. And you're going to be doing that. And that is one of yes. So okay. has Jody talked to you about the? I saw that one in the. Thing. The next couple of years plans I for the next couple one. of years. I okay. saw that. And then the other one, kind of heritage. Heritage, yeah. So. Yeah, I noticed that road really, pretty really much. So in the next, you know, two years, possibly three, you know, we're hoping if all goes to plan to have those two developments <clears throat> done. So that's the that's been the ten year road plan. And of course we haven't updated it. This was as it was last year and because we lost our prior road agent, so we're gonna be mm -hmm. excited to have, to resume the plannings, which at this point we probably maybe we'll do next spring, because then you will have had several months of come becoming more familiar with the roads and we work with Stratford Regional Planning Commission because they own they they operate the software tool. It's not in our possession. So, I guess that would be it. Purchase order? Did you want us to consider a purchase order for the vehicles, or? Oh, did you want? Yeah, I got the purchase order. I don't like. I said I don't know the price. Well, why don't? Okay, so just. You want me to wait? Put it next week. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that would be fine. Yeah, if you get an estimate, just a ballpark. Yes, I, I get a price tomorrow from Sam and what the estimate is on the inspection and stuff. Yeah. He, just, in fact, he didn't have it. Yeah. He wasn't there this afternoon. So, so as long as we have a reasonable ballpark, what? Do you want an uptake price for that? That's what a purchase order is, though. I mean, it's right. not. It doesn't have to be to the penny, and even right. you can even go over it as long as it's it's a as long as it's not material. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going over it, if you've got a two thousand dollar purchase order you go over it by five bucks I would not consider that material so but if you go over it by two hundred dollars that's you know that's different you still want some roads patched I need to get a tarp that keeps the heat on the hot dog it runs you out hundred and five bucks you have authority to buy that just work with Caroline hey, no, I, just, I, wanted to make sure. I think we've got the prices I don't remember under 200 or under 400 but so you can do that, just, you know, at this point. Yeah, it's getting colder than the hot dogs. It's going to cool out a lot faster we don't cover it. We, we want to talk about Kelvin before yes. you go. Okay. So, uh, but let me get back to, to um, you didn't want the card to purchase the card. Card's coming. Card's coming, yeah, so. We may get, the card may be here after the store is here. Okay. Well, it's okay. Somebody else can use. I mean, Car Caroline can use the card, or you can. You know, I, I don't like to do this, but we could, we would reimburse you. It depends yeah. on your level. Yeah, Rochester truck. We probably have an account there. I just didn't want to order it without asking. I don't know about Rochester truck. That sounds unfamiliar to me. But if we have, okay, all right. Yeah, I would. Say that's within your prerogative. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So the highway department <clears throat> and the town hall maintenance budget are the two budgets this year that have, you know, this is the budget that soared right over. So nonetheless, I mean, we'll, you know, there's stuff that needs to be done and we're not talking about something that's going to okay. make things, you know, and difficult. So salt. We've got, we increased the salt budget, so talk, Caroline will show you what it is for the, for the end of the year and 
if you think that's not sufficient, that we'll need to know about, like ASAP, because... I was going to say, we probably want her daughter a couple of little salt and have her in there. So, so ha look, have her look at the budget with Caroline. Okay. And... Um, because we did, we did we put some more money into that budget. We revised it. She may not know what it is, but she can always give me a, a buzz or whatever. Or I'll let her know. So this is the latest version. Oh, um, okay, quarter three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with notes. So that's what I was going to sit down with you later in the meeting. Yeah. So, so as long as you're here, and we just Kelwin, Kelwin, Kelwin. Before you go, Kelwin, mm -hmm. Kelwin. budget upward by 4000 so it currently is at 29000 that has to take us through December. And we've expended just a little over 25000 So there's about $4,000 there. If it looks like, I mean, I, we won't tell until the weather comes. Right, and all indications I would put that would pretty rough winter, but that's, I guess, in being like it is every year. Yeah, so. yeah. So if if we're going to shoot over, I don't, I don't know how much salt $4,000 buys us. So, but she has the contract. Uh, she'll let you know how many tons that buys, and we pay sixty-three dollars a ton. I don't think so. I think it's fifty-eight. You can get coal patch for less than a hundred dollars a ton. We just sold the contract. It was sold. Is it at sixty-three this year? It's fifty-three next year. It's the, the, our new contract is 53, but it is, it went down. Yes. Yes. So currently it's 58. It's not, it's not six times. Oh, so yeah, it's been a little more than Yeah. So uh, 58, I don't know, whatever it is. But Caroline will know what it is, and you've got about 4,000. So we're hoping that that's... Yeah, I mean, the shed's got quite a bit in it, but I think when it, if you had the money, but just... We've got $4,000. <laughs> okay. As you can speak. Yep. All right, Kelwin. So she what did you? Now you're talking just on that short dinner. I I don't I I don't know. I know that. Uh, so Summersworth apparently didn't help the situation because they plow that force and they they take the their breaks must, there. The road must have been muddy or whatever. They took the top. The hot top is gone for about ten or fifteen feet at the end of the road. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we got a quote from. So. So there's a resident who, who, who uses every opportunity to let us know how bad the end of the road is. And he had a conversation with Somersworth. Do you know Mike Wolpinski? I don't know him personally. Yeah, so he's the head of DBW or whatever. Right. It is. He used to be at Okay. And so I've had email conversations with, with Mike. And because, you know, it's such a small strip, what I wanted to know was that Whenever you are doing something in Summersworth with somebody, let us know because it'll be cheaper for us to to just tack something on. So in fact, they are doing something, and it's with Pike, and we've worked with Pike, and so he let us know that it would be twelve thousand dollars. But he didn't say what. Is it just for that? Is it for more? So I I talked. Chris Matheson is the contact at Pike, okay. and so I've sent. Did I include you on that email? You did send me that. All right. So. I asked him. He just wrote. He probably he wrote back. He probably sent it just to me. He says, "Yeah, I'll get back to you." So he didn't really come back with any information. So I don't know what that twelve thousand is supposed to cover. Is it just that little piece at the end? Is it no, more? No, it's not going to go far. So. It's not going to go far. All right. So it must just be that little piece at the end. But there's, yeah, there's quite a bit of damage on that. In the it, yeah. 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 Because your drains are not going to work. It's all dirt now. I'm talking like ten or fifteen feet anyway. Yeah, I I did. I did go look. I mean, the only thing I can say is that it's okay. It's the end of a dead end, but still, I mean, still. So, I would also add it. Yeah, that definitely needs to be fixed. Okay. Well, we'll keep you. I'll, I'll let us know when I hear back yeah. from Chris about. And it's getting into the end of the season for them guys when they get about a month. Yeah. So the only the only way that we might even consider doing it is if we took some of the state of New Hampshire supplemental funds that we were given. <laughs> That's the only way we could even think about doing that. So yeah, they would some they haven't started paying, but they were prepared to pay, you know, so they're not gonna be long. 
All right, I'll, I'll send him another little to see if he can get back to me. Other than and, that, I'm good, I think. Okay. For now. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, George, thanks for coming in. All right. Welcome aboard. Well, Welcome thank aboard, you. indeed. <laughs> Get plenty of rest before the snows come. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be that. It's, it, I always had no issues with that. So it's. Well, we worry about our folk, you know. Yeah. All right. So we'll go back to uh, building inspector. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, minimum housing standards. We had a couple of unresolved issues that um, we wanted our building inspector to give us some advice on, and he did. So he reworked those paragraphs that didn't seem to make sense. Okay. And I, I sent out an email today with a link, and so as, as far as I know that we're ready to go with that, but it needs a final review, particularly from Tom, and particularly the space thresholds which, you know, he said, well, just use 200 whatever it is, and I wanted to make sure I had those down for Are you unclear? Did you not see that? I'm looking for it. Each of them today? Yeah, today. I think so. Minimum housing standards. Final review. Yes. Nine fifty five. Nine fifty five. Yep. So, so our tentative public hearing is November, I think I say it here, it's November 6th. So we would need to get the, uh, our recommended proposal uh, done by next Monday. Okay. So that way we can post it, we can have the minimum housing standards for people to look at, and so if you, uh, so it'd be good if we could all review it one last time this week, so that the board is ready to make a final decision on it next Monday. Okay. You don't, you don't want us to do it without my bread, though, right? No, we're going to wait till next Monday. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I just wanted to make sure that we all do it before then, because that then then we'll have it in place. And, okay. Agenda. Uh, septic fees. I, you know, I actually don't know what uh, Tom came to speak to us about it. Uh, I guess at this point we should wait till we're all here and we can have a conversation about whether we want to do. Have Tom continue to do the reviews and whether we want to have, have a fee. fee for septic review. Yes. Application. Yes. So I, I think we should table that and wait for Mike if that's a, okay. Although there is going to be a fee increase later on that I don't, we can't wait for, so it'll just be the two of us. Okay. Uh, a compliance issue, um, this has to do with a, a residence on Clement Road, <clears throat> and I think uh, the issue got a, lot, a little more complicated between the landlord and the tenant, the tenant and the landlord, and I didn't, um, I, I, I think Tom is going to get back to the both of them to see if he could get them to come to some kind of agreement rather than getting us in the middle of a but it doesn't it doesn't mean that when we still have the, the larger compliance issue that the board once once it has its focus and its legal dollars lined up will want to do it. so this isn't saying we're not going to touch that particular property it just means we may not be ready right this minute because we don't have all of our ducks in a row Open well. I believe Tom has sent or will be sending a letter off to the owner of the property with the open well. It's a civil matter, but nonetheless, we just, you know, uh, Michael heard about it, so we're going to let them know that there is that uh, thing that, sh that should be dealt with. So that's being taken care of. Transfer station position. That was for Saturday. Has anything happened with that? Or, or what, what, do we, what do we want to do with this? Transfer station Saturday? Yeah, it was a position. Somebody yeah, come. Still it. So are we, have we received anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll just keep it there? Mm -hmm. Tra there it is, transfer station fees. So the town clerk uh, said today that we really should make our decision sooner rather than later about transfer station fees. And um, 
The auditor was here this morning, Tom, uh, Tom Dume, on another issue, and he actually, the town clerk made sure that Tom and I met with her so that I could hear <laughs> Tom's issue about uh, he can't he can't readily identify or or prove out you know when you sell one ticket for ten and then some for five he doesn't really recommend that he says they should all be the same price so I'm just you know reiterating that but the other thing we've talked about is the possibility of increasing the transfer station fee to twenty dollars a year is that how do you feel about that I still recommend it well I recommend it as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so, what about what? Well, usually, we have this discussion after we have the, the motion, but let's let's we can, we're already talking about it. So, what do you think about? Because I know you felt in the past the <clears throat> having the second one having a price for the second ticket that was different from the first. Right, and then that created a fusion with the with them on pulling up. If you have one, if you don't have one. Now it's just a flat rate, and um, we can get a flat rate for everybody, whether you have one car, two cars, or four cars in your household that are using and the that's transfer what Tom, station. And that's what Tom recommends. So, um, but the transfer station is, is definitely losing money at this point. Um, most towns have a transfer station sticker, like Barrington, plus um, bags. Or you go to Summersworth or Dover and you have a bag system and for every piece you have, you have to, your bags is like $1.50. I like so, the bag, but I, I, I love that. I've mentioned that before. I love it because it's it's really a user fee. Right. If you're not generating a lot of junk, you're not going to fill up a lot of bags. Right. So, so I, I like that. Uh, my concern right now is that there isn't the, there isn't the time right. to plan this out because right. we would need to or want to have more public input uh, on a, a, a kind of a change in how things are right. done. But you know we do have the fees. What we're doing is suggesting that we change the fees. I'm really ready to entertain a motion. Right. She was yeah. Okay, I make a motion to change transfer station fees to twenty dollars for the year 2018 for all. For all transfer station stickers I per vehicle. I would second that motion. Do we, are there any other discussions we might want to have? All right. And I will call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 We'll be on the firing line, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, um, the, on that, um, they, the clerk would like to be um, at the and she, she wants to be there the first week of January, and she would also recommend um, a detail the first week of January as well. But one of the things that they did say is that they knew they would take a lot of heat for that, and they were the ones that had to hand off the stickers. And they were willing to take that heat. And they actually said that. Those, that was their quote, not mine. So, mm -hmm. well, to it, me, it's still a, a it's, it, it's in town. It, it's, okay. it's not a lot of money. For so, reducing for some, yeah, it's, it's not a lot of money, but for some it is. Um, I still like the senior discount, but if I can't get that, then would you say that the if we, if we did go to a per bag, pay per bag, that that helps that situation? I really don't want to go that I need it a month over. I'm just talking about just in general. I don't I mean know. like we're not going to do it right now because we don't have the time. Yeah, I know. But so if you generate a bag, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we could sell bags. I don't know. We got to, we don't want things to get too complicated. We'll talk about it if we ever get there. Right now, we've already done the. Yeah, you're already in the firing squad. We're already in the firing squad, yeah. so we won't make it worse. That's fine. Okay. All right, so transfer station improvement projects. So I did get the balance left in the transfer station <clears throat> project. And Caroline reminded me that we should have some of the bond council fees uh, come out of that. So we have about 11000 I think. So what? Did you have a? Am I supposed to look at something? 
I don't know, were you, were you going to be able to do a purchase order for the cans? Or? Yeah, the purchase order is right here for the cans. Oh, perfect. And if it comes out to more, we, will, we can just pay for the bond council somewhere else. So, okay. What, what does it come out to? So, two 32 yard, um, uh, 20 foot long cans, what, they were each 56.5, so it came out to 11.30. All right, so I'll entertain a motion then for this purchase order. Move to accept purchase order 1321 to Atlantic Recycling for two demo cans um, for a total of 11300 This is under Warren article. This will be come out of the transfer station approval project. So uh, I will second that, open it up for discussion. And uh, Jody, can you just explain so we all know again that the cans that we got from NRRA? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we got a grant last year for two cans from NRRA. They were supposed to be used for recycling. They were not used for recycling. We have stickers that are supposed to go on those cans specifically for recycling, whether it be the refrigerators, the tire, whatever we want to use it for. Shingles, whatever. Not, not just generalized. Not demo. Demo. Because they're a recycling group. So, um, the cans we, we have been using, they've been, been using for demo. So, these cans will supplement, which we needed anyway, they were, cause that was the long term plan. Mm -hmm. um, we'll correct that. It will get us in line with the terms and conditions of the brand. It also, and they, these have been on the CIP. Correct. So we can remove them uh, from the CIP, and probably in the future, you know, we'll probably just kind of uh, build them into the operating budget. I think that they're every five to eight yeah, years getting something, new cans, something, something like, like that. that. We can so, talk about the best way to manage it, but they're, they're they're on the cusp because it's you know ten thousand on the CIP. So right. I don't know. So. Any other comments or questions on on this? Was there a shipping? Do we know if there was any shipping? I'm going to call Todd and see if he can wait the shift because he's been very kind to me this okay. week. Okay. All right. Well, then I will call the question. All those in favor say aye. It shouldn't be much anyway. <laughs> we can drag it up with a. Yeah. A, we'll pick it up ourselves. Nice. We'll just drag it up the hill. Yeah, all right. All those in favor say aye. 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 You already have two containers sitting there from Atlantic. Sorry, they two truck back there. Mm hmm. Wait, what? He has two of his containers back there right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes he does. <laughs> so when he's coming to pick those up, he can deliver those. Yeah. I'm sure uh, he can work it This is from the transfer station. So training, so so Jody is is our point person working with you during this you know transitional mm -hmm. training period. So that that will change. The other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, Jody, was appointment date. Uh, when George and I uh, talked on the phone, we said his first day would be Tuesday. And I said that because it's a holiday, but anyway. yes. And so you know, the fact of the matter is that. So what I think is, I mean, I, I don't want to penalize an employee because we put an appointment day of Tuesday instead of Monday. Okay. And, you know, not giving him that holiday because now that, otherwise that would be a day where he would be paid from either Berwick or us. Okay. Which seems like a, an unnecessarily, an unnecessarily penalty in a okay. way. So I would like to consider changing an appointment date from, what, what was that day? That was the 10th. From the 10th to the 9th. Yeah. So you want to change the appointment date from the 10th, 10th to the 9th? Yes. And so moved. All right. So uh, Jody moved to change the appointment date from the 10th to the 9th. I will uh, second that. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 So here's this timesheet. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was just, you know, I should have. You know, it's, it's all well and good. I, I made the mistake when I, I could have started the Friday before. You know, but I did. I just threw that number up because I didn't think at all of it. Right. It was the first day you were showing up physically. But. Correct. Well, you better sit with me all week. You're going to make up for it, buddy. That's all I got to say. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, right over there. Yes. Thank you. Are we done with both of these then? Yes. Excellent. Uh, Kelman Drive, we've talked about. The Howie Department roof. <clears throat> so I had the occasion to talk to Andy. Somehow he, you forwarded to him. Mm -hmm. So he saw my name and number. He called me. Oh, great. So a really nice person to talk to. Yeah, great. Very nice. And he talked about the Howie Department roof. And he said, you know, the roof, uh, the roof isn't showing much wear. The problem is you've got the wrong shingles and they were installed like incorrectly. So they were nailed too high or something. They're not self-sealing or something. So they were nailed too high and they were not self-sealing. And so they, so the wind grabs them and, and flips them off. He said, so you have a choice. You can, you, I mean, you could do the whole roof, but it's $30,000 or something. Mm -hmm. Or you could just budget that you're going to replace a few every year and you know like eight eight hundred to a thousand dollars and so that's the that's the situation that we're in it doesn't with, look that bad uh, no the roof itself doesn't look that bad last year a bunch blew off and they had to that do some patch work yeah so my thought I, I don't know what you think my thought is you know what let's just do it that way yeah let's just put the roof on the cip yeah it is on the cip cip just doesn't have a i think i did put it in a mountain it's, it probably is not on the copy you have because it happened just that, as I talked to Andy. Okay. The other thing Andy said about the town hall roof, we don't have a quote for that. But he said, you know, it's not, it's not desperate. I said, you know, I think you can wait five years. Yeah. So he's going to get us the quote. When we get the quote, uh, we'll plug that figure in. He, he also said that using scaffolding will add thirty to forty thousand dollars to it to, the, to this job instead of a lift so the lift is cheaper yes it's just that you need somebody to manage the uh, I guess because I can't remember why but throwing the shingles down or something mm -hmm. so you we just need somebody on the ground we could supply we could supply somebody on the ground you know if we've got you know highway staff or police detail or some you know or you know we could yeah, where they were doing the cupola, they were specifically in one spot per day. So yeah. when you're doing this whole roof, that's going to be a much bigger removal. Yeah. So, so I said, well, why don't you give us a quote for using a lift and not the scaffolding? Because we can probably figure out how to manage the, the traffic control mm -hmm. down, down on the ground. So I haven't heard back from him. I said it wasn't. You know, it wasn't acute. We didn't need it right away. That was probably a mistake to say we didn't need a quote right away. But that's okay. That took him some time. Yeah. He told us we were there was a bunch of quotes he needed to do ahead of us. Yeah. So, so that's where that is. I felt good that we didn't have to do that next year. Great. So, he said that the steeple did need to be done. You know, that was just very exposed to the elements, the shingles. You know, you needed to do that. It was a good thing that you did. But he said, you know, they're not as exposed there and he says it's not in, not in bad shape. Okay. So that's my uh, conversation on, on the roofing. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't have any information on the removal of the shed at the RPD. I can say that the uh, proposal went out, the RFP went out for uh, to get figures for a new police station. And it will at least give us a budgetary figure to look at right? once we get that back. Caroline said that there's been some interest. People have been asking, you know, contractors. Oh, good. So she's been giving out the RFP. All right. Um, I'm ready to go on to town administration. Uh, project updates. Oh, we might have another department head here. And we do. I was just ready to go into town administration. All right. But come on up. Okay. We'll do you. Have you met George? Of course. Oh, cool. All right, excellent. Long time ago. Oh, long time ago. Oh, that's, oh, of course. You have to give him his keys. I remember now. I've known George for. Oh, okay. Really? Man. I've worked with his father. Man. My wife went to school. You have dirt, huh? What's that? 
I know many, many people in town. <laughs> Maybe that's not a good thing. I don't know. I'm looking please real quick. Just the show. Just the show. Okay. First order. Number 1306 made out the Scrabble County Sheriff's Department for uh, yearly dues for the SWAT team, $250. Move to accept purchase order 1306 from Shefford County Sheriff's for one Shefford County Regional Practical Operations Unit support for the SWAT team for $250. I second. Any discussion? They, they reduced it by seven fifty. Really? Yeah. Well, that's right. Originally, they wanted to do a thousand, but mm -hmm. is that because we we have somebody on the team? No. no. Just, Every, just everyone everyone pays the same people that has on the team. Okay. Not. All right. Oh, very good. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And we have an officer training. Right? Yeah. So, so is he fully ready to go? No. But the, it's in process. It's in process. I mean, if they, get, they, if they get a call, they'll call them, and they'll just monitor and observe and they're not at this point. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's hope he doesn't get a call. Yes. Yes. Okay, purchase number 1307, made out to Axon Enterprise. This is for two um, TASI units, 26 training cartridges, uh, two battery packs, and one data, one data port download kit. We're told two thousand eight hundred forty dollars and ninety three cents, and that will come out of our equipment account, and this is an anticipated expense. Move to accept purchase order one three zero seven to Axon Enterprise for multiple. Good, I like it. <laughs> the bottom line. Multiple equipment items for two thousand eight hundred forty dollars and ninety three cents. I'll second. Second that. And so this is already, so this has been budgeted, there's no budgetary issue. Okay. I'll sign it if I get it back. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 And last but not least, purchase order number 1308, made out to two way communications for eight shoulder microphones for the new portables. Um, and that will come out of line number 287, the radio repair account. Um, I've got, uh, I think, 1200 left in that line item. And uh, since we have all the radios now, I don't anticipate any, uh, any repairs for anything that need a radio. So. Move to accept purchased order 1308-28 communications for eight shoulder mics for a total of $840 and that six cents or $840. Uh, that's not right. $840. $840. $840. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 In 2018 grants, we already submitted three grants to the Office of Highway Safety, and we've been approved preliminary at this point. And the first one is for distracted driving and traffic enforcement, and they will pay the town of Ronalds up to $1,750 to put an officer on the road. Uh, extra hours just for the purpose of doing traffic control. And this will be in uh, uh, 2018. So I'm, I'm uh, Asking for, the board for to, uh, for looking for distracted drivers. Looking for distracted drivers, yes. Yeah. Uh, the, only, the only part of the town is to put up is for gas for the cruiser. And that's it. They pay all the they pay all the uh, fees associated with the labor. Well, let's. So, so you're moving to how? So you want us to authorize the grant? At, at to this accept, point, to accept the grant. 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 Pending approval from the final approval from the state. The state. Okay. Well, let's put it in motion, and then we can we can ask uh, questions. Okay. Uh, motion to accept um, proposal grant for um, Rollinsford Distracted Driving Project 
318-188-029. I'll second that. So, so Chief, um, money that comes out that we're going to have to cover is really just an increase to the gasoline line? There's no... What we're going to have to do is either we can absorb it into the existing budget as it is, or we can add another line item to the police portion just indicating, uh, uh, probably the contract services section, just indicating uh, um, highway safety reimbursement grants for $2,000. No, I don't, I don't want to add any okay. accounting complexity, but okay. I just want to know about the covering the money part, money aspect. So we could not touch the police budget as you've submitted it, and we'd still be fine yes. covering all of that. Yes. But I will be able to add some money on the revenue side. On the revenue side, yes. Yeah. So that's a very important thing. Yes. I, and I, I forgot <laughs> what the email was. Say. That's what makes me smile, because George came in here early, and he had a list like this long, yeah. you know, the <laughs> things that he needs. Well, don't be sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you just have one thing. It's yeah. just that that's life bigger than a bread box. Speaking of bigger than bread box, while well, they're doing that, um, can I ask you about your trailer? The trailer that we bought for the police, yes. does that hold our mower? It's a four by eight trailer, so it should, yes. Not big enough? Okay. Four foot wide? Yeah. Ah. Where? Mower's, big. Mower's bigger. Mm -hmm. Mower's bigger. Wider. Okay. Never mind. So I, need to, I just need to know the revenue figure, the, the reimbursement figure. 60-inch mower on that machine, I believe. 17 50. 17 All right, that's excellent. And it'll be in the form of a grant, so I'll add that to our grant sure. line. Perfect. And are you saying now comes the fun part that I need a... Uh, Can you give us just a minute? So you want us to... I need to sign. Did I call this? I didn't call it yet. Mm -hmm. Did... Uh, Jody moved it and I seconded it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 So you want us to sign? So with a blue uh, tab sign. So on both you, of us. For both of you, and then I will sign as the police chief on the signature number three. Okay. And then my bottom every page is an initial. Remember. If you, if you leave the date, uh, I'll fill the date for tomorrow and I'll get it that JP and I sign the form. Okay, name and title. Well, no, the different brands. Yeah. You've been busy. How do you find out about this grant opportunities? I was thinking I was going to ask him to take a grant writing course, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been getting grants uh, for many years from, uh, from highway safety. DJ Black patrols, uh, we've done traffic enforcement patrols in the past. Um, they give us money to put towards some of our camera, our video cameras and cruises and things. Mm -hmm. So what about, so I hear through back channels, which, you know, because the CIP met this week, that the RFD is looking for an upgrade to radio equipment. So I wonder if there was any opportunity, any grant opportunity for them. So it wasn't just an idle comment. Um, I'm not sure uh, because we didn't find any grant money available for us. Oh, sorry? We didn't find any grant money available for us for the radio upgrade, with the exception of the repeater. So, uh, because we're there, 
just replacing existing equipment that might, might be yeah, That's true. Not adding they don't two. Want, right, they don't like to cover you over. Exactly, exactly, yes. Yeah, got it. <laughs> I remember that. It all comes back to me. <laughs> for the RFP. That meeting with somebody Wednesday and somebody on Friday. Out on the <coughs> those site, site visit. So if they ask questions, though, you have to give those answers to everybody, right? Well, if, we, if, if whoever asks the question, it would be the same answer to anyone who asks. I mean, I'm not going to call you and say, oh, by the way, person A asked this question, I would call D, C, and D. Well, we I mean, have it's to make not sure going to be anything other than what's in the oh, okay, RFP okay. listed, or like they may want to know the, the dimensions of the site, the software not copy of the, uh, okay. the, um, the site map that we used, yeah. okay. survey that we just did. We just need to make sure that we tell sure. everybody. That was the same, same thing. Yes. Okay. You sure? I can't do two things at once. <laughs> well, the want you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a long brand, too. I was talking to our bond council a couple of weeks ago because we're, you know, we're going to be closing on the USDA grant alone. It's not a grant; it's a loan. It might as well be a grant for all we yeah. take. And you know, the bond, the bond council is a really very nice human being. She, she was just she said, "Well, you know, the USDA is a stickler for the bonds, having the bonds in hand." And I said, "You could have put the period after the word stickler." Yes. <laughs> we had to jump through all kinds of hoops. I mean, it's great terms, you know. Uh, we're lucky to have that loan, you know, for all 30 years of the term, but there's been a lot of uh, red tape or just dotting I's, crossing T's, whatever. But the road should be fully surfaced, I think, resurfaced. So I don't know if you've. Um, the roads are open now. All of our roads are open. Pine Street. Yes. Yeah. MPT equipment, uh, as you know, this year we put two uh, up, up, upgraded uh, laptops, or I should say tablets, and the cruisers to sync up with IMC and the new spots, e ticket system. What's MPT though? What's Mobile data terminal. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's their official word. We, oh. we can't call it computer or laptop, it doesn't mean MPT. Of course. Um, yes. <laughs> For maximum <laughs> confusion and lack of. And this one, this one here will put the, the final two. Uh, with a MDT to match the first two. And this is a 50-50 match, and they will give us up to $4,000. So I anticipate that we'll probably have, uh, I think it'll be 3,700 our share for this last MDT, 50 is about 3,700. So I anticipate, I put $4,000, but I think it's gonna be close to $3,700 that will come out of my equipment fund next year. This is for next year. This is 2018, year. correct. So what we're signing now, we're not going to have to deal with until... Until 2018, next budget. So we need the full 8,000, though. Mm -hmm. We have to put in the full 8,000. Right. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, the the, um, the 4,000 from the state will come out of our FEMA home insecurity slash oh, I reimbursement. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. So, so half, of, half of it will come out of your... Half will come out of my equipment fund, and the other and then the, come out of the, the part that we're going to get reimbursed from is going to come right. out of that. I got it. Okay. Perfect. So, um, I'm going to pay another, another probably thirty-seven hundred dollars for. Well, if it's coming out of the reimbursement, I've already got that. Okay. 
So if that's you gotta change the setting on it. Is is that seventeen hundred though? That's some that's the one we mentioned. Oh, but you have to turn no, that's 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 revenue because yeah. there's no yeah, right. that's being covered by your budget. Okay. Okay, so I'm asking that you accept the uh, the grant for uh, 2018 Rawls MBT program uh, up to four thousand dollar matching grant from the town of Rawls. Uh, move to accept uh, the Rawlsburg MB MDT equipment grant for matching grant up to four thousand dollars. I just second that. Any questions or comments? I think I have now in my head how we're managing all of these things. So the the half that we're that's coming out of the half that we're supposed to expend is going to come out of your regular budget. The recovering the reimbursable piece. Correct. But with that FEMA line. So as Correct. long as we don't make it go more than the, whatever the twenty thousand or something that's in there, we're Correct. in good shape. And should we have a bad winter event, that would also we'd have to have some in there, I think, to right. sort of manage. Help us manage any, any uh, expense. Okay. I think we're good there. Yeah, I think we're good. I agree. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Because this is the same drill, huh? It is. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for going after these. I mean, this, this gives you some value. So it's a really good thing. Thank you. I'm still looking for some more money. Excellent. So, Jody, can you hear? I'm going to ask. A yes. Question. So, the things like the repeater, we haven't actually spent. We haven't done that yet, have we? It has not had the, the, the final approval now. It's my item. Oh, okay. All right. Then I will, I will wait patiently. Because we're sort of nearing the end of the year, so I'm just trying to get all of our spending lined up. You know what? I could. This is probably dangerous, but I could do this. And last but not least, a grant for a radar unit, a stealth radar unit. Um, this is the one that we, hot, we put on a telephone pole to monitor the traffic and do traffic counts. It's uh, the exact same item that we've been borrowing from some of the and Postman PD for the last several years. So we can do uh, accurate traffic counts and speed counts and things like that. And that unit costs about $3,300. And the, the state's willing to give us half, about uh, 
no more than 1650. So again, a lot of portion will come out of my equipment that line mm -hmm. and the reimbursement part will come out of the reimbursement line. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking that um, to accept the enrollments of Grand uh, from Office Highway Safety. to accept the Officer Radar Grant for the Town of Allensburg um, for the amount of 16 I second. So is this also, will have its impact in FY18? Yes, FY18. Uh, any comments, questions? All right, I will call it. All those in favor say aye. 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 On here. It's right here. Why is it is the heat? Why is it warm? It's cold outside. It was extremely hot outside. Out in here this morning too. It was like someone had the heat turned up. Huh? It, it showed 80 degrees when we came in here. It, this morning the heat was on for whatever reason. <laughs> what was that? I just kicked it back. It's supposed to be cold tonight. All right, so, so go ahead, I'm going to put things on your list. Uh, just one last item. Uh, the repeated grant is going before the Governor's Council um, for the review and, and discussion on October 25th. So we should hear sometime shortly thereafter whether it's been approved or not. So my question is, um, once we get the approval, we order it. In the event it doesn't, uh, we don't get the invoice for it until 2018. So, How we do that? yeah, good question. So we'll check this out with Tom, but <clears throat> if we, so the Warren article was was March of 2017, yeah. and we, you know, we will have gotten GNC approval, and so, and put in and done, you know, whatever the purchase order, we may have already done a purchase yeah. order. Yeah. So as long as it has the intent, and if we, it's not too long because we did carry forward some things this from 17 to 18 because even the town report. 
So we'll check with Tom and make sure that we can do that. I mean, you're not anticipating it's going to go deep into 2018, are you? So it's more just a, you know, we could be it just on the cusp. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we should be able to do that, which is preferable to anything else. It's really messy. Not good. So, so that's the, so that's the, this is why I dragged this out so I could, and thank you for your copy. So that's the uh, $75,000 Warren article, card, right? And the, <clears throat> our share, the, the grant share is coming out of the FEMA line. Is that? No. no. Everything's coming out of that. They, every, all right, this covers correct. it all. Right. This correct. covers everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This covers everything. When will we get our money? <clears throat> as soon as uh, we get invoiced. Yeah, so we have to actually pay. We have to pay. Yeah, we have to pay it on. It's cost reimbursable. Right. So, so, in fact, <clears throat> if the funds don't come in, so if the invoice doesn't come in, it's not just the expense that we will we'll have to Adjust, adjust the income, we'll have to adjust the revenue, which is actually not so bad. It's, it's a lot easier to do, I think, than my, than my understanding of how these things work. <laughs> because we have a reasonable fund balance, so it, it will, it will work, that, that will work its way out. <clears throat> so, okay, so that's that one. And the, the other one is Town Hall Security. It looks like we've had, got that fully expended. Am I reading that correctly? Uh, that was ten thousand. Yeah. Yes. So we've got a nine thousand six hundred fifty-eight dollars. Yeah. yeah. And those are the are those the only two that you had? Uh, yes. All right. So we're not. Yes. There's no nothing. There's nothing else outstanding. It's the repeater. It's in process. We should be hearing at the end of this month. Yes. Okay. All right. That would be exciting. For those of you who like, who like, good, who like good radio communication. Thank you. Anything for me? No, I was just going to, I needed an update on, sure. on those expenditures that we hadn't done yet to make sure. I, I just, I have this fear that, you know, money money from here going, that I've either double counted some revenue or, right. you know, but I, I think I'm good. I have, I have submitted a request for reimbursement for the MDTs and the e-ticket system, so we should be getting that this one. Okay. And I just got the copy of the check from Bev at the end of the day, so that went out today's name. And also, I, I would like, if you can answer this tonight, that's super, but for the detailed work and the FY18 budget, you've got $75,000. Is that just the money that we're expecting to pay? Yeah, and, and, and the... Talking with the lieutenant, we actually need to reduce that number again. So. All right. Yeah. But but still, what is the formula that I should, you know, given a certain amount of budget dollars for detail, what does the revenue side look like, roughly? I think you're going to add. Uh, percentage. Percentage. Yeah, percentage money. Probably. I should probably verify what Caroline comes, but probably. 60% on top of that. Really? Yeah. But we've built out, uh, I, I think we built out so far this year. Well, that's a big number, so if you can verify that with Caroline. I think 65,000 we built out so far this year. Mm -hmm. Through? Do you have the, the have third quarter? We do. So we get the contract services on that? The expense side, right? The expense side. Yeah. Through, um, through September, thirty-one thousand six hundred. Yeah. So. And we build out. We build out uh, almost sixty-five thousand. Because that, that'll allow me to, to better to better budget, better anticipate the revenue part, which I don't think we've been doing a good job on. We're talking to Lieutenant today. We might we might just go to sixty thousand instead of seventy five thousand. Okay. See how see how next year goes. And then do you want me to wait to hear from you, or do you yeah, want me you to would. make that? If you would, yeah. sure. I'll send you an email uh, before Friday. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Excellent. I was trying. I was trying to be really generous, and uh, you may 
have not all report for the best. But I said, that's all, but you have to find it, but it's all about the numbers. <laughs> On both sides. So. It is, yeah, it is. Yes, but to the extent that, you know, when you balance out something in the expense right. side of revenue, it's, help, it's helpful. Sure. So, yeah. All right, I think right. that was my, you, you sort of answered my questions in the course of this conversation, so I'm good, Jody. I just wanted to thank you. Um, most of the residents don't know that the highway still needed a computer and a printer. Since you guys have your grant, you're now sending your old equipment that is not so old to the highway department, so that just saves us the time. And yes, thank you for that. And everything. So thank you. That's I excellent. want to thank you for that. Thank you. We all have each other. You're both of spending money they don't have to. That's right. With a brand new unit, so. Appreciate it. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. What time do you want? What time? Well, you don't wait for five, you wait for nine. Nine one? All right. Okay. I'll just have you on the there in line. Does that work? Yeah. I'll say here from you differently. I'll put them out there for the nine. Yeah, I'd point to a couple of hours for you. The majority of that out of the way. Fine. Sounds good. Good. All right. Okay, so we'll continue on with town administration. Uh, project updates. Uh, so, the project. The project is substantially completed. Yeah, indeed. There's, there's top coat, I think, on all three sites. I haven't seen them all three, but I'm guessing that that's there. We're having our final walkthrough inspection on Friday the 20th. I don't know if you were going to be able to join us or not. I sent out that uh, an announcement. It's, it's a Friday morning. George, if you'd like to join us as well. i got a question on that. Are they putting guardrails down there? Uh, so, on, on uh, Pine Street? That's so, a pretty no. good drop off on Polk Street. It side. is a pretty good drop off. We, uh, we had conversations about that, and the issue is that the, they were, they were, it was in the original budget, and it's expensive. Guardrails, as you know, are expensive. <clears throat> the property owner does not want will not give us the easement that would allow us to do that. <coughs> so, there are no guardrails. I, I'm not, I don't think I, I've stated that precisely correctly, but it had to do with, we, you know, there's the, the property owner, <coughs> it's a, it's a non-conforming lot, mm -hmm. that the property owner at one time had a building permit to put something, a house in that non-conforming lot, it, and he never did it within the time of the building permit, so that it's expired. He had to get a zoning variance, and it's all expired. But should he want to do it again, he felt that the presence of, he wouldn't be able to come to access his property. So I don't know what he was going to do to access it, why, why, I don't remember the implication with the guardrails, but we had to, we had to adjust the project because of an easement issue with the property owner. So there were no guardrails there before, and there are no guardrails now. So all I can do is tell you what the how this transpired. Right. It wasn't the original, it wasn't the original plan. Um, so would you like if, if you would like to join us on that inspection? This Friday. It's not this Friday. It, well, it is this Friday actually. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Hang on. Friday. Yes, it is. <laughs> Why did I think it was like sometime in the future? I mean, way in the future. Let me just verify this. Yes, at 8.30. And we are meeting at the, I believe, the lower mill first. So the, where they? Yeah, I took a ride down to it today. Okay. So that's where we're going to uh, meet. And I don't know if we're going to come back here afterwards or not, but we'll go to all three sites. And then the USDA person, our program officer at USDA, is coming that afternoon. She can't make it to the morning inspection. She's not the she's not the USDA engineer. She's still, she, I don't mean just her. She's our program officer. So she's the one we talked to about all of the, the loan application and all the paperwork. She would like to see the site that afternoon. So I'll be showing her around that afternoon. And again, I mean, if you wanted to join us, you could. But, you know, I... I don't know that she'll have any other questions. 
If she has specific questions, I've got our engineer on call, so we just call him um, and, and ask if something like that surfaces. Okay. So that's the, it's this, this Friday, 8.30, lower mill. All right. Uh, we won't know how we've done cost-wise. Uh, we just did the second pay prep for uh, essentially the lower mill. And, you know, of course, the big item is going to be helped with the foil tanner, I think, invoice comes in. And possibly also, uh, there could be some adjustments that they've had to make with, uh, especially Pine Street, I think, and all of the pipes that they found in the lower mill. Okay. Uh, we're working on closing documents for USDA and the Bond Council, and that's kind of what, okay. what's going on there. Uh, budgets, quarter three review. I mailed out the quarter three uh, review, and uh, you know I wanted the board to see it before I sent it off to, to the budget committee. Mm -hmm. And you know, over, you know, overall, based on the numbers, I'm not anticipating any difficulty with our expenses from now through the end of the year or our estimated revenues, with the possible exception of the culvert. I mean, it's done now, so. We, there were no like huge terrible surprises, but we'll see how all of the, the final invoices come in. That, that's what I meant by that. It's the cost associated with it. because anything that is over the warrant, the authorized amount, is going to have to come out of the, our operating budget. So that's the biggest. That's the the biggest unknown cost-wise is is that other than you know something dire happening from now to the end of the year that we have absolutely no idea about, but that's the one thing we sort of know that we don't know about. Okay. Otherwise, did you have any questions on the on the quarter three? I mean, the, the biggest budget revisions that we've had to make throughout the year have been to town hall maintenance and the highway department budget, you know, with the the winter, winter help and the equipment. Oh my goodness. Yes. It was difficult. You know, apparently there was a, so I also asked Caroline to keep separate. We have an equipment line, and we have a vehicle equipment line. I've asked her to keep separate the equipment cost and the maintenance on equipment that's not related to the vehicle itself, okay. functioning of the vehicle, to put that in the equipment line. So the plows, you know, the, the uh, plow blades and all that stuff should be in the equipment line. The, the vehicle itself should come out of the vehicle maintenance. But if we're paying a lot of money for snow plows, it doesn't mean that that truck is not any good. It means that the snow plow equipment isn't good. You know what I mean? I want to know what we're paying for the to keep the vehicle itself functioning on the road. Okay. So I've asked you to keep those separate and we, we move them around. Overall, it doesn't change the overall expense. It was like about $20,000, I think, yeah. of yeah. Uh, both vehicle uh, maintenance to the, the, our equipment, the vehicles themselves, and some of the plow equipment and other equipment that we have. So, but otherwise, um, you know, I'd like us to wait for the final tally on the, <clears throat> for the culverts, but what I'm thinking is, you know, we'll be able to, to schedule the town hall mold remediation this year. We haven't done that yet, it's 3,500. Didn't they just come in and sweep it or inside a contract? Am I forgetting? What are you forgetting? That we signed a contract with Town with Elvis Townsend to come in. The vents were all wrong and they were leaking because they were that all That was air conditioner work. Yeah. This this is this is and not Townsend. It, it may help, but we still have issue <laughs> We're still doing dealing with mold remediation. So 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 we should, you know. I'd like us to wait for the final tally to come in on the culverts, but we, I think we're going to be able to schedule mold remediation. I'm glad George is still here because there's the brush chipping. I don't, have we talked? Has anybody talked to you about so, this? Someone, you mentioned that I looked at the pile. I haven't got a quote or anything. So we've got whatever whatever it is for brush chipping. But it, it, is, it is getting up to it. I don't think it'll make the winter. So, so, so. We haven't moved that money out of there, so as long as we don't have to go raiding lines for the culvert, you know, we should be able to do so. Please do go ahead and get, get quotes. What about the trees? We can. Do you have the three again? Yeah. Do you have quarter three? Oh. 
we can look at it together, it would just be easier. So, So I did. I did. I'm sorry. You're going to save that 4,500 for roadside mowing. That's not going to get done. All right. All right. So we'll, we'll, all right. We'll come back to that in a minute. So, so tree maintenance. I've got 5,000. And we have a purchase order for 10. So we've spent 800. So we could we could do five. Okay. And uh, you know we'll find this 800 somewhere. You know there is 800. Okay, but now we have to go back and revamp. The, the reason why we held off on this is because Eversource was coming in and doing a whole bunch of trees. Yes. So now we have to revamp what trees still need to be done. Well, uh, so my understanding is that, you know, Jeff for the 10,000 didn't have. Urban Tree knows the trees that are in question. Mm -hmm. And so what I think. What I think would happen is if we decided to go ahead with the purchase order, we could just tell Urban Tree, you've got $5,000 and, you know, just find $5,000 worth of dead trees. Okay. Um, on Sligo, Bear, Old Mill, and Core. And Is that true? From Eversource and that's the contract. Oh. <laughs> really? It's been on hold. Hmm. Well, it was on hold for that. It was also on hold because we didn't know if we were going to have the money. Right. So, so I'll go over. I have a list that they made up last year of what trees were called. Now, I don't know if it's down there or not. So, uh, make a copy of the order that was made. So, if you want, you can amend this purchase order. For five thousand. I'm gonna play Mike's double advocate. What happens if the tree falls in the middle of winter? We won't have any. Money. We weren't gonna handle all. Oh, I mean, what happens then? Yeah. Well, middle of winter is January, February. Mm -hmm. Okay. What happens if the tree falls <laughs> on my birthday? I know. Because <clears throat> I think he brought. He was on the about that the last time. Like mm -hmm. we sp expend all of it, and the tree falls. It still has to get to go between now and January 1st. If the tree falls, what they can get? The tree has to be cut down. We don't do that because we don't have the equipment to do that. Right. So, so if the tree falls, we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can go on where you push some of these. Right. Exactly. We have equipment to move stuff on the ground. We right. don't have equipment to climb up and take trees down. Right. So we're all set if it falls over, so no problem there. I mean, I think. Um, I don't, right now we're not running that tight that we wouldn't be able to absorb that. I don't want to, you know, if I, I did cut down this budget to five and actually we've spent 800, so we probably should amend it to four. Okay. To four. But I think we can spend that four in good health. Okay. Okay. We should accept purchase order. Amend. I should say amend. But oh, we never accepted it in the first place. Did we accept yes, it? Yes, we did. Oh, jeez. Okay, move to amend purchase order 968 to Urban Tree Service for $4,000 of tree work throughout town, uh, removing dead trees and overhangs on possibly Sligo Road, Bear Road, Old Mill Lane, or 4th Street, up to the amount of $4,000. I second that. Any other questions or comments? All right, then I'm going to change this. Five thousand. What thousand? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Sounds good. There's four thousand. Now, now I only put five thousand in next year's budget. By the way, 
we can maybe talk about that in a little bit. Did you say 4,000? Yeah, mm -hmm. I did. What did I just put? But Didn't I just? Thank you. So I put five because I was, you know, filling in the blanks. I thought, well, <clears throat> if we're doing some this year, and if Eversource is doing some, I didn't know they weren't doing any of the because they of doing that maybe we, we would be fine with them with 5,000 next year. So maybe if you're working with Urban Tree, you can get an idea of what's left. When you're working I... with Urban Tree? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he, we, we've been working with Urban Tree, which doesn't mean we have to continue working with Urban Tree. Right. He's, no, we, he's, I have no problem with Urban Tree. He's come through and he knows the trees and whatever. So if we go through with executing this purchase order, you can ask him to, if he could, give us an assessment of the remaining dead trees and what he thought we should budget for. For... This call whole time. Time. Call, uh, Ed. Yes, Ed. All right. Thank you. All right. What brought that on? What brought on this? I don't know. Our agenda? I have no idea. Oh, I quarter three. I think it was idea. quarter three. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. that's that's what it was. We're looking at that. So so there is money in brush chipping as well. So there's forty five hundred. There's this, and I think you can go ahead with the brush chipping, at least getting quotes, not, not, not no, with chipping not itself, cold. but getting quotes. And then, you know, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll have better clarity on what what the final numbers are on the culvert project. Yeah, yeah, we know what it is, yeah, they're pushing it back, and it's probably won't make the winter if you get a bunch of brush, so. Okay. All right. Um, If there's time at the end, I would like to maybe go through FY18 figures with you, some of them, to see if there's things that you can, you can help us with. Uh, we do have a Department of Labor hearing uh, on, uh, you know, uh, our prior road agent, Jeff St. Jean, has filed a complaint with the New Hampshire Department of Labor. The hearing is the 24th of October at... 9.45 a.m. Oh, sure, it's the 24th and the 25th. I'll double check the paperwork. I don't have either date in my calendar, actually. I saw the paperwork and I put it in the calendar, but that does not mean I did not put it in the I think Caroline sent us the thing, right? Yes. October 25th, so was I saying the 24th? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, the 25th. So 9.45, you've got this, so you, you know as much as I do about where to show up. Okay. Uh, they say we have the right to have representation by an attorney. Do you want them then? Mm, uh, well, let's talk about it. I say the, the worst that happens is we lose, okay. and we pay, we pay this like $900. That's the complaint. That's the amount of the complaint. Oh, well, so it's, it's going to cost that Exactly. So right. that's okay. what I think. So. That's fine. But we can talk, uh, you know, 
we can talk before you go if there's anything you need, like our personnel policy or anything like that to bring with you. Sure. Thank you. Twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. Yes. I do have an airport. Sorry. Uh, tax rate, as far as I know, we have all of our material registered, you know, in line. They're still waiting for the MS-1, which has to move from one part of the DRA to the other part of the DRA. So uh, we'll check in periodically. I'm hoping uh, to get it sooner rather than later, but uh, we don't have it yet to review. And normally there's a review process. They'll give us the preliminary. We may we look at it. Tweak it here and there. So we're not at quite there yet. Uh, so Caroline and I were talking today about you know the town credit cards. I think it came up because we were talking about George and stuff. And I'm I'm concerned about some of these other cards that are out there. And I'd like to start to retrieve them because we don't have as much control over those other cards. And so in the process of that, I know that the front office has a Staples card. There's no reason why they can't use a town credit card rather than staples. They actually told me they were starting to order from a different company anyway because they um, they came in with prices better. Yep. So, that was so I would like to uh, consider providing the tax collector with a town credit card so that she can you know call up and make a, make these orders for paper itself. It would be under the same restrictions as you know any other town credit card. So. Would they both be using that same card, the town clerk and the town collector? The, the tax, tax collector? collector would be making the purchases on behalf of the front office. Okay. You know, she's our employee. I yes. think it's cleaner yes. that mm -hmm. way. So, you know, so, so she would. Yes, it would so. just be to Andrea okay. as tax collector okay. and our employee. So, because there's a financial implication, I think I'd like a motion to recommend that we provide. Uh, our tax collector with a uh, town credit card. So moved. Uh -huh. Excellent. I will second that. Any questions or discussions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Excellent. I will pass that along to. Moves quickly. I like it. Keep it going. You get that right. Okay. Ah, so uh, let, me, let me have provide the. the uh, Board of the report from the Garden Club. I don't know if we, I don't know what we can do because there's only one of you that's not a, without a, I guess a conflict of interest. I don't know. But anyway, the Garden Club's tree initiative. They would, uh, we've had another tree donation. It's a tulip tree, and uh, we'd like to plant it. If you are uh, looking at the fire station, directly on, you know, facing the fire station. You know, there's the gravel parking lot. Yeah. And then there's like a stone and a monument to somebody. The park, yeah. Yeah, the little, the little, little park. It's a park. Okay. That, it's listed as a park. Is it listed as a park? Mm -hmm. So that we would like to plant a tree in that general park area. Tulip tree. Um, uh, how much harder mowing is it going to be? I don't know. I know the there's already a tree. Okay. And um, forgive me, I don't know what a tulip tree it, it It flowers and it's very pretty. Okay. It's not small. But it it's can not grow. like a bush, like a It's not a shrub. It's not a shrub. It's okay. a tree. It has a stem. Okay. It has just a stem. So it's not like. It grows about 15 feet. I gave it. No. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. we don't, you know, Michael's not here and it would be better. I think I've lost control. <laughs> Sorry. So, so, so I think you no, know I'm fine with it as long as the people that mow. Okay, so we'll wait till Michael's here though. But I just wanted to get some initial feedback. That's yeah. sort of you know we're trying to do trying to do Main Street, mm -hmm. and so when I asked Chief Rutherford because I thought you know if it's fire station he needs to yeah first get give us okay. He said as far as he's concerned his property ends with the gravel mm -hmm. parking lot. Okay. So then I asked Caroline, so who owns the rest of it? She said, well, it's actually it's ours. It is ours. Yeah. Town. 
And I said, okay, then I'll bring it to the board. And then you're going to have to put it more behind the rock or equal to the rock because you can't have it too close to the power lines. Power lines are across the street. Are they, are they across the street by then? Yes. Okay. But I, what I did, what I would like the garden club to do is to stake it so that people, so that the board can see it. I don't think they've done that because I went out there the other day and I didn't see a stake. Okay. Because there's quite a bit of uh, uh, land to choose from. Yeah. You know, it's not, it, it's not useful for anything else because it's narrow and stuff. But still, for a tree, there's plenty of opportunity. Right. So it would be nice to get a stake in there so that we could, could tell. Okay. okay. Um, so we'll, we'll keep it on the agenda for next time. Uh, were there any questions on the treasurer's report that I, okay, I didn't have any either. I will note that you can see now the PDIP accounts are there at the bottom, you know, the money that we received from the bonds and stuff. So Beverly is, you know, uh, reporting on that for, our, for us. Uh, administrative support. Um, I believe there's money There's money in that line, and I don't think we'll need to rate it, but if the board is more comfortable waiting until we get the culvert bill, we can do that. Okay. <laughs> All right, and we'll take that as a yes, let's wait. A board meeting for October 30th. Yes, that came from me. That is trick-or-treat night. So I have little ones that they're not going to be little much longer. So I would enjoy going trick-or-treating with them. So. I would like the board to make um, to cancel that meeting. We can either cancel or reschedule. You know, uh, Jody, I, I don't see any reason why we can't uh, cancel it and do what we normally do. If something comes up that can't wait, mm -hmm. we hold a special meeting and just take care of either the contract or the welfare case or whatever. Okay. So, so I'm away Tuesday the thirty first. Um, well, let's just wait and see. Okay. I, and I'm happy to wait and see. We just need to note, uh, post the notice that we're not going to do it. So our, I, I'm ready by consensus to say we're not going to meet that night. So moved. All right. So I'll make that, uh, we'll, put, we'll post that out there. And enjoy, enjoy your feeding. Ten thirty. Is it October thirtieth? October thirtieth. Yeah. All right. And I'll let the department heads know too, so that they have a purchase order if they can come to see us before. You know, not to, not to just hang on to it. All right. Copier contract. <clears throat> so I let me tell you how. Um, I budgeted, you know, just based on a conversation I had with Caroline b before you spoke to this copier person. So, let me, I, what I want to know is whether I, I need to adjust the figure. So let me see what I have. Is this a strict lease? Not a lease to purchase. This is a lease. I prefer that, so I'm I'm happy with that. So what he offered, um, same offer that he had at the beginning of the year, um, $112 a month for 48 months, um, black and white unlimited. Um, color copies we do pay for um, per page. So if you have a five-page shop, you would only do a color. The computer, computer can separate it out. Um, and what is the cost for color? Uh, color is 5.9 cents per copy, billed quarterly. Okay. So we would. What about? Do we supply the paper ourselves? We do supply the paper, but they supply all the toners, labors, drums, everything. The service includes all parts, labor, toner, drums, everything except paper, at 250 a year. So you're going to pay $112 a month for 48 months plus service, which is your $250. All right, let me, let me write that down. I didn't quite have that. So all I have was the $112 per month. So it's $112 per month, but then it's $250 for a service contract yes. per year. Yes. 
and he's willing to waive that if we do it now for this first year? Or, is that, or what, did he, what was the question on that? What he's willing to do is if we have the 250, pay the 250, he will waive the November and December monthly payment and wait till January to bill us for it. So we have to pay for it November, December, just to yes. wait. I think that, um, let, let's say we do this. I would prefer to pay it this year if we have the funds. If we and rather, I'd rather rather than adding to next year's expense. Okay. I'd rather do that. So, right. but the outlay would be two. So it would be two hundred and fifty. Yep. Two hundred and fifty this year. So this is FY seventeen. Let me, let me just write this down. FY seventeen would be two hundred and fifty, and then the hundred and twelve for two months. Yep. Let's say. And he's waiving any other setup fee or something. Right? Yes, he's waiving the, he calls it the, the technique <laughs> that comes out. And make sure everything is working. Right. And one of the nice things that it does is um, it'll be wireless from our phones as well. We can link our phones to it. Um, and when we're sitting in a meeting and we don't have a copy of it, we, if we can send it to the printer. Absolutely. That's what, that's what they're waiting for one more That's meeting. what they're all geared up to do. So, so it's nice to be able to use that, that service. And we ought to be able to set up Google Print so we can print from the Chromebook. I mean, that's yes. There's no reason why we, really we can't print yeah. from the from the so, Chromebook. So, so um, put that on the list for when he's here that day. Put what on the list that you want to print from the that Chromebook. Yeah. Um, and the service pricing is frozen for four years. And this is the same company that they use downstairs. Yeah. So they're purchasing. I don't. I don't yeah, I think that was part of it. Because if you've got just a solid lease, then it, you know, they will just, you know, replace it as you, as you, sort of wear out the equipment. All right, so that's good. So, um, so do you want this purchase order for the two fifty, or do you want it for the two fifty plus the, what first months? So. Yeah, you could put you could put it for all the outstanding FY17 costs. So the yeah. 250 and the 474. And then we'll review. It. I'll check our budget figures and we'll look at it next month. How does that sound? What did you get? 474. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> well, you're doing it. I just want to run the numbers for, so we can review next week if that's okay. Sure. <laughs> this time, if there's time later on, let, let's get through the rest of the stuff. Okay. Let's get through the rest. <laughs> You're a tough customer. Ah, let's see. Old Mill Lane Bridge, nothing to report. Historical Committee, nothing to report. I've asked our auditor, I've asked the DRA actually waiting to hear back, but this is tax rate season, so that will probably be a while. Job descriptions? Job loss? Uh, yes, everybody. Good loss, not jobs loss. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had a meeting this morning. Um, they actually got quite a bit done in the last couple of months. Downstairs has their certified container to contain their hazmat. Um, highway still needs a container to contain their hazmat stuff, gases, oil, flammables, things like that. Um, Everybody took their CPR. There's a few new employees at the library that need to take CPR. Um, and I'm minutes. Um, but it was just this morning, and we meet again. Um, Andrea um, has to turn in hers. And our town clerk is an elected official. So the Bob recommended to have at least a list of things of what they do in case for when the next person comes on, they know what their list of things to do are. So I mean, you it's can pull something well, yeah, from the yeah. list. I mean, it's, it's controlled by RSAs. Right. We don't grant them those authorities or responsibilities or duties. The yeah. state does. So CPR was completed. Um, fire drills are going to happen um, within the building, either between the fire or the police. They both have the authority to pull the button. 
Um, the AEDs um, were all updated. The batteries, etc. The the pads have expired oh, and the they pads. have to be replaced. Okay. So the next time the pads are going to need to be replaced is September of 2019. Um, they're going to go look at the library this week. The library is 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 not up. Um, and they need to be replaced. But by the time they're replaced, everybody will be replaced. There's an AED at Highway. Yes, there is. There is. There is. I believe there is. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure of that. Um, Not the transfer, transfer station. It's in the Highway the highway Department building? Mm -hmm. It's in the Highway That's Department That's where it's building. housed. But these are you just bring them to where you need them, right? So if somebody... Right. But if someone goes down at the transfer station, you've got to run to the highway together. Yeah, well, that's... They didn't have to wait for an ambulance. Right. Yeah. So, MSD book on this floor is complete. Police are going to be working on their MSD book um, during the winter months for their volunteers. The library is going to start working on their MSD book. Um, um, material safety data sheets. It's a EPA, I'm sure. It's a book that says, like, if you have a palm olive, you got to make sure you have a, the information on if you get it in your eye and so forth with everything in. So, as a general rule, no one orders anything without, um, that's not already on the list, because if you ever get audited, say you change air freshener, mm -hmm. and it's not in the book, but the old one is, you can get penalized. Mm -hmm. So, it's it's not a fun process. So, why don't you stick with the product you really like to stick with it. <laughs> so the or at plan. least put the MSDS sheet in if you do buy something different. Right. Right. Don't, don't those, yeah, you can get those online? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's how I did the whole building. I just went around, wrote down all the, like the looser, that's new since I put, did the book. So, <laughs> they're going to take home. <laughs> so, um, so, the ADT, um, the a AED pads we talked about, um, uh, we decided that if the transfer station has to close due to bad weather, George gets to make that call, um, notify. Sorry, if the what has to close due to bad weather? If the transfer station has to close due to yep. bad weather. Yes. It doesn't happen often, but it no, does but it happen. Does, yeah. um, he will make that call, notify Caroline and Tia, police and fire, to get the word out. And I'll explain um, Tia. Caroline, it should be Caroline. This is Carol, this Caroline. Then Caroline, show, yes. Show. It would be okay. better to do it that way rather okay. than. Tia shouldn't have a lot of. Wait, one people okay. funneling things at her. Okay. That's, that's my recommendation. Okay. To the Carolina. Training on the compactor is going to be happening. Um, Atlantic's going to come over and um, train everybody, and then they're going to have documentation that they had training in their file um, from Atlantic. Um, and then they also discussed um, the training that the DES provides for our transfer station agents and level one, level two, lead operator, and all that jazz mm -hmm. today. Um, job descriptions they're going to be working on. That's got kind of moved again. Um, library does have job descriptions, but Bob is going to send her the format so everybody has the same format. Um, flagger training is going to be offered to employees um, in the spring of 2018. Um, we believe George already has his from me. Yeah. And we believe Paul from the transfer station might already have his. Um, so and just um, just to make this part of the conversation public, I did ask Chief Ducharme uh, if, if, assuming that we go through with either Heritage or uh, the Woodlands at, as a, in our road plan, if we could use flaggers as opposed to police details because these aren't major roads like Bear and Foundry, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So that will help cut down on the cost because the answer came back, yes, they just need to be certified. Right. So. Right. Jeff did be. make a point that in our ordinances it does say that it has to be a police detail. I think it says so, for major, I thought we right. had it written that there was some uh, ambivalence and that he could make that call. Right. So that's why I asked yeah. him. So I assume he's made that call then. Yes. So. <laughs> so you mentioned that this morning. Yeah. No, I, I, right. I knew there was some something in there that allowed us, depending on the, the severity, not the severity, but the, the, the road condition of the 
where, where it was happening that we didn't necessarily hear. Yeah. So um, in your report, they're going to make up a paper version to keep it all areas. Because right now, Primex asks for all these sources of information, and they have to go to Caroline for it. They're going to make up a paper copy of the same questions, and they'll have it on site so they can fill it out right then and there. Um, they, there was an incident. Um, police, a police officer was hurt during SWAT training. Um, he just had some slight cuts on his arms. He was treated on site by paramedics. No action is required on the RN. They had everything that they needed. Okay. Um, and he's fine. Um, um, ready care is available for our shots for our staff. One of the questions that did come up today is flu shots. Do we provide flu shots? Why would we provide flu shots? For our staff. I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm not saying we should. I don't think we have. We've done. We've done the kinds of shots that are for which a transfer station attendant is vulnerable. Yeah, those kinds of things. We don't normally do flu shots. Is there a rationale for an employer doing flu shots? I mean, there are lots. There are lots of clinics. They're not expensive. Are they? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think some of them are. Well, some would take your some take your insurance, but we have staff that most of our staff don't have our they insurance. Don't have insurance. I see. So, um, but even if you go, it can be anywhere from ten to twenty five dollars. Mm -hmm. So, and we'll get charged at the same amount. Now, so how many? What are we talking about? What level of? We have, we have eight police officers. Time. Police officers, transfer station, and highway department. And, and tax, tax collector. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, do you mean all the fire, all the on call firefighters? I don't know. It was so I said it for you to Yeah, well, we, we have it. And, you know, as I, it started out small, but then when, as soon as I added the on call firefighters, that we've got a, it's a big number. Yeah. I mean, if there's a health rationale, I don't get my flu shot. I, I'm, I'm not a believer in the flu shot, so I don't know if I should abstain from this conversation just because no, no it's my, not it's good to know what you're that, that's my, okay I personally my children don't get it I don't get it my husband does get it mm -hmm. so and I in my policy at work is I have to have a flu shot and if we don't have a flu shot we have to wear a mask within three feet of our patients I'm always in, I'm always in the mask three feet from my patients so it doesn't matter so but that we do have policies at our work that everybody is mandated in the future. Because it's health. You're in a health we're, facility. We're in a healthcare facility. So Ours is more not to get them sick than to get us sick. Right. I mean, we just, you know, we never have. So I, I need to think about that. Okay. Just brought up to me yeah. that I bring to you guys. Yeah. So I reached out to my work to see, because I know we do, we do flu clinics. But I don't know how much that costs because that's the other side I think of the I've seen some. I think Hanford, I mean, I, I think I've seen some for like 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. they, so they are. But it's $10 and they're pocket not dollars. So, yes. So I understand, I understand both sides. So. Right. But if they're not under, I mean, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to keep an employee healthy? Yeah. Are we trying to keep the general populace healthy by not having one of our employees transmit it? Do you know what I mean? My husband work gives them out. He works in at Goss. And they give them out for free to their employees so their employees are not absent. That's why they do it. So my work does it for a whole different rationale. Yes, you're up close and personal. So it's understandable. I know, I mean, you know, Judy's a volunteer in the hospital. She has to get a flu shot. It's given to her by the hospital because it's, right. it's a requirement. So we're not, uh, 
Well, we can bring this up again. I'll, I'll, I'll think right now. I, well, you don't have to make this for the moment decision. You know, and it, it, it would be expensive. As soon as you had, what, 30 on call firefighters? So you're looking at maybe $400 if they're only $10 a piece, but if they're $25 a piece. So I haven't gotten a call back from my work yet about that meeting. So. Well, I'd be curious to know how other. Do you have, does the town of Berwick go? Uh, I never get in through the town. You just got it through your own. I always get it myself. Yeah, yeah I've always gotten mine myself. I mean, the uh, university. I've never, never heard of an employee go there. So. Yeah, I mean, mm. now the university did provide clinics. You know, so they handled it that way, but not always. They did it some years, not all years. Okay, so we can continue to think about that. Any anything else? Uh, uh, DOT, um, DOT, and CDL. Um, George brought up a good point this morning that um, they need um, DOT physical certificates, um, even though they have a CDL, they still have to have a DOT physical. Um, and I also brought about drug testing. I don't know what your feelings are on that, but well, we have to. We have a drug policy. We passed it uh, this okay. just this year. Is there a random drug testing? We don't do drug testing. There's just if we have. I'm trying to remember how it's phrased. If we have the suspicion, then we can. I believe is how it's written. But there's no random drug okay. testing policy. Right. Just that you are not. One is not. An employee is not supposed to. Right. Show up under any kind of uh, drug, alcohol. See, that was, that was vague over, I mean, the ones that drove trucks in Bellwick ended up on a drug testing program. However, we felt it wasn't fair that not everybody was involved with that because we all work for the same town. Right. I just brought it up today because I want to know if we had it. Yeah, we don't do drug testing. We do have a drug, anti-drug, or no, you know, no because, tolerance, I mean, no drugs. Anybody can go off. Yeah, things happen. You know. So, so, but what, so, can you go back to the CDL and, and what you were mentioning with the CDL? The physical. Or George? Or so, you can explain it better than I can. Wherever I worked, where was you required to have a DOT physical, the employer paid. So that's my question. So the DO, the state DOT requires physicals? If you carry a CDL license, you have to have a DOT physical. So what were we doing in the past with like Jeff? That's what I said. He probably so maintained it on his own. I just said, I just asked if it was covered. I've never seen one in his files. No. Yeah. So. But they should have, I can, I get a notification from the state if my DOT card This expires. state? The state of New Hampshire. Because, okay. Maine, we were, uh, in Maine, the town did not require us to carry a CDL. We were exempt. However, the state of New Hampshire requires you to have a DOT physical to hold a CDL license. All right. So, well, if so, to the extent that your ta your health insurance won't cover that, and it's a condition of having a CDL license, then I then the town will obviously that's a requirement of employment, so we would pay that. But while we're on this topic, I would like to talk to George about something related to health insurance, and I think we should go into non-public to do that. Okay, motion to move on to non-public for reasons of personnel. I'll second that and do a roll call, Jody. Yes. Suzanne. Yes. Can you stay with us for another few minutes? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to have the standing items. So, activities and updates, Jody? Um, I've been busy with highway and transfer, and I'm sure they're sick of me by now. Um, we had joint loss this morning. We're going to have joint loss again on December 4th at 9 a.m. Um, REC is November 5th at 7. Kind of budget from REC? It, we're working on it. <laughs> they, they were working on it. That's why they had to go to the 5th. So they are working on it. And then Michelle Small just sent me an email, which I just forwarded to the rec committee, that they have to present to the budget committee on December 6th. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll get it before then. Well, we need it before I know. that. Okay. Please, please don't let them think that they have till December 6th. No, they do not. No, okay. They know right. they are behind schedule. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. We won't come down too hard on that because it's still, you know, first year. Yeah. That was really the first three questions. But it would be helpful to get it as soon as possible. So Maybe. next year, we told them October 1st, next year we're going to tell them September, September 1st. Yeah. September 1st. Like, we'll get that out to all the department heads. Mm -hmm. September 1st. Because it just makes it really too difficult for us to, to bring everything together in a coherent package. Uh, uh, we have the inspection, the final inspection of the culprits on Friday at 8.30. Okay. Um, and we're doing closing documents for the loan, but I don't have the closing date just yet. And I have a phone conference call for the bond council on Wednesday. Uh, all right. So I think that's it for activities and updates. We'll go to the permit folder and then the correspondence folder. Are you managing both of these for us tonight, Jody? Can I can if you want. Sure. Just make it back to the calendar. Okay. What's what? Is this? Oh, that's part of Can I go away in the budget room? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, building permit 2017 111. Um, for nine uh, site addresses. 937 Portland Ave, um, map 20-2, finishing work on original permit, changing vanity, mirror, and lights, and sticky tile floor in bathroom. Um, Tom Clark reviewed it, fee of $115. Okay. If Tom, for me, if Tom has reviewed this, I'm fine. Okay. No, I don't, I don't pay. Uh, the question is, how much time are we giving them? I did it till March. Okay. That's probably a good date. Department 2017-112, 3 Highland Ave. Um, renovation of existing barn and home office, first floor, second floor, electrical upgrade, renovation, uh, roof and barn, looking to adjust, update existing permit. Um, and then there was a note attached to Tom. It said, board members, fee is different between fee paid in 2015 and current fee. I remember this because it's on my street. 2015, he wanted to change his barn into an office um, mm -hmm. with a kitchen and a bathroom. Mm -hmm. And um, so it never got done. So, um, but they don't have the layout on this new. So this is the, so this was the old permit. Mm -hmm. so, so what we're charging is the difference between the two? The difference in fees between the two? Yes. Yes, it was changed. Um, the fee was changed to this original fee back then as well. So yes, this is just the fee difference. Okay. Oh, $55. I'm sorry. And we didn't have a problem with the home occupation or whatever home business thing, right? That was taken care of. Right. It's it's a home. It was a home office, and it, he was going to have one or two cars there. Whatever. Um, home office, not necessarily home business. Correct. Okay. So it was it was going to have a conference room, a bathroom, a kitchen area. Um, Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the 
house is up for sale right now. Where is it? Right on the corner of my road um, on Highland Ave. It's the big, beautiful white Victorian. So Actually, it's not white anymore. It's, it's green, green, I think. It's so green. the purple door. Go off and it's. Just as you go up the street, it's that first big house walls. on the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that the house that has the cell tower? No, that's 17 at the end. Yeah. 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 $335, Tom Clark has reviewed it. Building permit 2017-116, 118 Sligo. Um, roof repair and renovation is for $40,000 for a fee of $425. I was just, I heard the price and I went, oh my god, what's it going to cost for this place? Which is so square I went. <laughs> I presume they have the money to do their own roofing, but I'm thinking, oh, how big is this thing? It's pretty big. I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty big. That sounds slight. But they're also doing renovations. Property address 118 Sligo, Robin Aikman. Oh. Construction, it's not just roofing. Right. Roof repair and renovations. Yeah. Doesn't say anything about building a new building. No, no, but if they're changing the if it's they're just changing pitching the pitch. Yeah. So that you know, that means construction, not just that's why it's expensive. That's I'm trying to make myself feel better just you know. <laughs> Um, Are you giving all of these till March, by the way? I'm not looking. Um, some of them I gave a year. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, depending on what they're Yeah, but that's fine. I just want to make sure we're more generous than, you know, December 31st. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, 2017-117, um, 914 Portland Ave. Um, remove pool under uh, above ground value assess as of October 1st, 2017. Administration fee of $25. We're just taking something down. Yes.
2017-118, 450 Church Street. Uh, repairs, um, siding on existing platform. Tom Clark reviewed it, seven seventy-five hundred dollars for a fee of a hundred and five dollars. Quite a few permits. Same the same thing. It's like they always yeah, had a week off. off. It was nice weather this week. They're all watching HGTV in the head. Oh, that's that because of the Trent, the, the okay. can't see the, the yeah. boom going yeah. in. So how much is that? Um, $35. Oh, okay. that's good. Okay. So just just order it. Did they order the one for them comment by the bridge? Did it break? It's gone. I haven't gone. seen it. I haven't seen it in forever. It's been gone for a couple of months. I would just ask That's a different book. year. Uh, I, I would uh, ask, who, I don't know who put it, the first one up was at the police, police, was well, the police recommended it because of the, the buses. buses going back and forth. Right, no, I understand that, but so, but who actually, was it the highway who put it up? Or? The police and the highway worked together on what mirror they wanted, I would say obviously the, depending on a the, much bigger diameter than what he was. Right, but the cost is probably such that, you know, depending on, you know, work with Caroline and, and depending on your budgets. I mean, we just come out of the, I mean, it's a safety issue. We'd already decided we wanted a mirror there, so we just need to replace it. We come out of the reverse The biggest mirror on here is um, 36 inches, and it's only $168. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that was missing. <laughs> Someone mentioned it to me about That's why I, I meant to bring it up to you. It's been here four days, those were me. It's good. It's good, though, That's right? That's awesome. It's good. That's awesome. Um, we signed the Atlantic Recycling already. Um, that's for next year. Uh, tree, we already did. Uh, Department of Labor. So this is from Michelle Small, actually, Inspection Division. Uh, civil penalty for New Hampshire elevator. We have received your letter um, concerning the civil penalty for the above elevator. In response to your request, um, the civil penalty was waived because it fell off the Department of Labor's annual inspection list, as noted in past history and chain label them all. Um, on November 3rd, 2016, a waiver was granted with the stipulation that the same consideration would be given if the violation, if, would not be given if the violation occurs in the future. Please, uh, in close, please find the letters. Um, please be advised that the letter is now on the Department of Labor's annual inspection list. So in other words, we will get that it's time for your elevator inspection. We'll get a letter. Is that what? Yeah. In the future, if another company is called to perform the annual inspection and the load test, you must put in writing that you request to be put back on the New Hampshire Department of Labor annual inspection list. The, the civil penalty is the amount of $500 is hereby waived. We have marked our records accordingly. Same consideration will not be considered if violations occur again. So the fact that we have load testing done by somebody else gets us off their their mailing email list. Email list? That seems a little harsh to me. I, to me, the way I read it is that they're coming out and inspecting it. They do. They the, the the years that we don't need it load tested, they come out to inspect it, and they 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 tell us it's time for your annual inspection. So. How I process that is the, that when we did the load test, because we had another company do the load test, not the state, then they took us off their list. That, and we didn't get our annual letter saying it's time for your state inspection. And so we get fined $500, by the way, 500 uh, small potatoes. So this so, was waived 
from November 3rd, so of 2016. So are they coming out in the near future? I assume that this was the waiver of the latest fine that we that we got. 16. Maybe just. Yeah. I mean, I could check with Caroline. They were. The state was here, and they inspected. It. They were here. I'd say two weeks ago. Okay. You know, we'll just need to remember that. I mean, it's it's. it's but they weird. will do a load test. They either. They either won't do it or they charged us to. Remember, we, we were talking back and forth about how to do this load test in a way that wasn't going to cost us as much as. I know. <laughs> so, we did, you know, we, we had, you have to get the certified however it is, however much weight it is. Right. So, we did get, we found a company to do it for us. I don't know why this, maybe the state didn't, or it was going to be too expensive. I don't remember. Don't forget. Oh, well, Michelle wrote the letter, so who we ask her? <laughs> uh, uh, I will. I've got a note to sort of make sure a that we are we have no outstanding fine from the DOL, and two that we keep this in mind when we, you know, it won't happen for another. I think it's every five years we have to do a load test. So you're not going to call Michelle. Did she say call her? No. No. Oh, I thought you were going to. No, I'm going to talk to Caroline to make okay. sure that we have no. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, move to accept purchase order 1282 to Green Shadow property maintenance for one fall cleanup in Old Town and Newtown Cemetery, raking and removing leaves for $825. I'll second. Any discussion or comments? I had it early. The ball cleanup? Are we going to get another one? Not necessarily. He's doing it proactively. He's um, giving us this before he's done it. Okay. Which is really what he should be doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yay, Mark <laughs> and the cemetery trustees. Nice work. All right, I will call the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, but I have a question. I have a statement for the trustees. Cemetery trustees? Yes. You want to make it that? Oh, sure. Um, Jessica Noonan Moore, who passed away last year, was a resident of Rollins Bridge. Okay. She, they lit Port lit Portsmouth Bridge the other night um, okay. in remembrance of her and the day of the, I'm going to screw it up, the type of cancer that she had. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to the cemetery trustees because they own the softball field. She was active in softball and she was active in basketball. She was a coach for both in volleyball as well, I believe. So I reached out to see if we could name the field um, after her, in remembrance of her. So I didn't really want to reach out to the family before I heard anything from them. Okay. Um, was she a coach here in town? Did she live here in town? Mm -hmm. She grew up here. Grew up here. And she's buried in Newtown. New oh, okay. Was she young? She sounds like she was young. I'm sorry to hear that. All right, so we'll, we'll wait. She was 25. No. Do you want me to that one? No. She's only Oh, okay. Move to accept purchase order? Yeah. <laughs> right, I move to accept purchase order 1281 um, to John Wastrom. Uh, from the cemetery trustees for repointing the mortar in the outside wall of the Old Town Cemetery tomb for $450. Second. Any discussion? $450. Um, it's nice. He, John is a resident of the town, so it's always nice to do business, so I think, with residents of the town, so that's great. Uh, any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Regional Planning Commission increase of 1.6%. Aha! Uh -huh. I did. They said that they put it in the mail. I, I I jumped the gun and I said, Hey, do you have the dues yet? Do you have the dues? I'm sorry, I do know this. So our dues have gone up um, for Stratford Regional Planning Commission. I think 47 dollars. It's not. 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 It's not.
it's a buy. It's a, it's a deal. Uh, I'm waiting for to hear from the municipal association, though. I, I don't know what their dues are. So I, they do sell forty-seven dollars. No, no, no. They went up. The dues in total are sorry. $3,105.75. It's based on a per capita. And how many cents? 75. Well, um, Stratford County, um, Stratford Nutritional Meals on Wheels. Um, Services provided to the town of Rollinsburg. 16 Rollinsburg residents on average nine. Um, on average, we are feeding nine Rollinsburg residents per day. 2,182 nutritious meals, 1,959 safety checks, and 5,302 supported services. Um, they are looking at the town of Rollinsburg to contribute $100 towards the cost of services to the Rollinsford residents. The total cost to provide Rollinsford residents these meals was $8,547. You're asking us for $100? Amount required for local match and over, uh, over contract units is 6409 We are asking the town of Rollinsford to contribute $100, $100 towards the cost of services to Rollinsford residents. So I will put that in the other budget request. Unitail. Unitail New Hampshire Service, Service Territory Gas Emergency Response prepared his annual breakfast meeting November 9th, Portsmouth. That sounds very exciting. Oh, mm -hmm. so I got to let it down the car. Okay, so noted. Do you want us? Do we have gas in town? Um, on, uh, just bottled. I mean, just tank. No, we, don't have no we have natural gas. We have it on Highland Ave. We have it going down Portland. Um, mm -hmm. But not, not all the way. Mm -hmm. Most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it goes to I Alexander's. I think it goes to Alexander's. I think That's it, it stop there. Many and things. I know it many goes things stop past there. my house. So but I don't know where it stops. So it's it a long stops. I don't have it. Okay. Yeah, it's very, stops very on very Highland. Good. Yeah, very it's stop on Highland. It's not something I worry about. Pardon? Going to that meeting. Because I know no. the pipes come for Highland, go right underneath my yard. So. Yeah. They do. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, oh, this was from last week. The Emerald Ash Ford. We talked about this last last time. Mm -hmm. I guess the Emerald it sounds it. like a bug that's not good. Yeah. So like when, yeah, we were going to give it to the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. Oh. Because they were nasty little critters. All right. Well, we can pass it on to them. They, is it ashes that they hit? Is that ashes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mountain ashes, all kinds mm -hmm. of ashes. Mm -hmm. That came two years ago. Mm -hmm. So many things. Okay. Move to accept purchase order 1318 to Townsend Energy. Um, this is to install. Um, the propane tank for the new shed on the new compactor um, for up to $1,800. Uh, we have a um, estimate for $1,743. All right, so we took that into account. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 All right, I will second that. And they're ready to sort of just come on. Hold on, I do this as soon as we sign this. Perfect. All right, I will call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Defense of the transfer station, I called on that too. They're going to be coming in a couple of weeks, and I'll notify a road agent and um, 
Good. George knows about the facts and what we're trying to do. All right. This is probably the contracts. Uh, so I think we should sign this as well. So I'm also going to sign the contract for, or the proposed contract for Thompson. Understand the distinction. Who's signing here? The work is specified. I guess it's us again. It's you again. Somebody who wants to pay us using direct deposit. But I don't know this group, Communications Construction Group. Yeah, I know. Oh, wait a minute. Caroline, we have invoices. Are details still due from this company? Or what does it say? And then there's a message from Caroline saying, Beverly would like the board to make this decision. I don't know what this decision is. I think we need more information. I will talk to Caroline. Okay. If, it's going to depend on if there's any cost to us. Although, for if it's not, if we're receiving, there's usually not a cost. It's, it's usually a cost if we're doing the ACH going out. But still, we should. Um, CASA, the um, court appointed special advocates. Um, they know what our budget season is, don't they? They do. For that reason, we respectfully request your consideration of funding $500 for your next budget cycle. Uh, in Stratford County, 111, 119 children, 34 volunteers, 47,000 miles traveled. Hours of volunteer time, 6,000. So yeah, please stick it in the back with the others. I'll come in some this morning and we can take a peek at all of that and get it compiled. Classic will no longer be available. What a shame. Now we're going to watch. Effective 20, yeah. Um, XF Triple Play Rewards Sports Entertainment Service at $8.90. Or preferred. Uh, preferred packages. Customers are currently subscribed to Triple Play. Will continue to receive their services to make the changes to their account. Health insurance. Uh, 
uh, and supervisors, control stress, uh, bullying complaints, levels of alcohol, customer service, absenteeism, training sessions. Um, just the life sources, the employment assistance program. Okay. And the 800 number. So I'll post that on the wall. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. And here's your WARN Act. Work, worker adjustment and retaining notification. In the event of a layoff or closure, you can contact the department. Um, dislocated worker unit at New Hampshire Work Step for which offers rapid response services, including meetings with workers, explain programs such as unemployment insurance and job training. I don't think we have a problem. We can't hire them. So, good problem to have. Um, reshadow property maintenance. Concern the F-350 truck with the sander plow, $75 an hour. The F-350 truck with sander, $65 an hour. Green Shadow property maintenance. Is this an estimate? That must have been an estimate. Because it's dated September. Are they offering a snow plow? Yeah. Looks like it. That's what Caroline said. She said that they got a, a bid proposal because they heard that the uh, road agent was gone and they oh. submitted a bid. Well, it's certainly something to keep in mind. It's it's not cheap. Okay. But, you know, if we. I'm going to hand that right over to you. <laughs> I mean, they, you, know, you might want to. It's all small trucks. It's just, you know, they won't be able to handle the whole situation. Yeah, so, but we'll, we'll pass this on to you, George. Oh, yeah, they don't even have to take the load to move the snow after the snowstorm. And that would you still have to supply the sand and everything. Yeah. That's yeah, really expensive. Okay. Here's the part of natural and cultural resources. So, that tape is the next year Forest Protection Bureau. Should we just do one for us? We have three ranger vacancies, which we will be filling over the next few months. Enclosed is a ranger district map. They will be conservation. Rangers? Forest rangers. We have had some changes with our agency as a result in a shift in forest ranger coverage areas. Many towns within the state will have different ranger assigned to them, effective October 5th. Okay. So, they are vacant in Lancaster, they are vacant in Concord, and they are vacant in Cleveland. Hmm. Um, Thirty-two. So Ryan Noel is our. Says Caroline, please let him know. Okay. And this is also non public. That it already says budget, so we'll okay. just file it with the. This goes here. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And the rest is all. This is okay. our commission. 
Health Trust will have a new email as of November 1st. And Health Trust is in for Doc Ford. They still haven't given us our rates yet, have they? I mean, yes, they have not given us our rates. Oh. Right. And I think I've used a 5% inflation. The bridge percent, the bridge. Yeah. Trucking obligation. That's where I went. I was looking for this all week. Clear.gov. When does that happen? <laughs> no, when is the other one coming that we did buy? Uh, I don't know. They, okay. uh, we will have to give them something first. Okay. And they haven't asked us for it yet, so I think they're trying to still get organized. They were hoping to have all of the subscribers in place by November 1st, but I don't know if that's when they were going to deploy. Okay. And now we're back to the copier. Okay. Um, can I just see the quarter three for a minute? Order 1322 to Seacoast Business Machines for copier lease service contract installation fee of $250 with a possibility of invoice of $112 a month for the month of November and December. And the total is? Total would be $474. Okay. So, so we've already built this into our uh, proposed budget, which is still a proposed budget, and the, the board itself has it. We know that we have problems with that front office printer. It's old. It's as old as. It's pretty old. I don't know how to compare it. It's pretty old. And so, so really, what we're discussing is whether we jump the gun and try to do this a couple of months early. And um, I believe that the budget can support that. So I will. Uh, I will vote in favor of this recommendation. So we're we ready to call the question? Sure. All those in favor say aye. 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 You will see to we'll speak to I can call you. Yeah. Or ask Caroline or however that works. Alright, where is it so I can sign it? What happened to it? Was there any uh, anything else or just this? Yep. Just this one? Training session and stuff. Yeah. Okay. First, we had to. Alrighty. Um, um, this is from the fire department, but this looks like non public as well. So. Okay. So we have three things. Are they all personnel related? They are all personnel. Per all right. So is uh, that two personnel, one veterans? veterans. Uh, Elderly. Elderly or okay. veteran? All right. Veteran. So why don't you call for the motion? Uh, I move to go into non-public for mm -hmm. two reasons of personnel, and we will move out and move back in for one reason of veterans. Uh, I'm going to hold off on that because we didn't do community input. Is that why you're, is that why you're waving your hand in They're my so direction? Good. They're so good. All right. We'll open it up for community input, and then we'll make that. Thank you for reminding us. <laughs> okay. So, Leopold, um, now that we have a new road agent on board, we discussed previously, well, there was a vacancy about um, the culverts on Washington and Church Street, and you guys looked into that. And uh, at that point, there was, um, it was brought to our attention that Church Street wasn't on the road plan. Are you guys going to go over the road plan with the new 
Good question. Um, road agent in review, make sure that all the roads in town are on them. Oh, I don't know what church, I've added Church Street, by the way, to the road plan. And uh, we've talked to George briefly about the 10 year road plan. So what we're doing right now, just because there, there were two things that caused, you know, hopefully when you set out like a 10 year plan like that, you review it every year. That's, you know, so you've got a, your 10 year looks like this, this year, it may look a little differently when you revise it the next year, but you're always doing a 10 year planning window. And the, so we were set to review this in the summer, early summer, and the software was undergoing a revision. So Stratford Regional Planning Commission said, let's do it in September. And I said, okay, I'd rather do it in the summer, but all right, as long as we can do it earlier in September, that would be fine. Then a road agent resigned. So, the and and you know our new road agent has not been here very long so what the board is doing right now is and we're not going to we'll let you know we'll be talking to george about this and letting him know what our plans are but we're going to proceed with the 10-year plan for the next two years uh or at least certainly and i say two years because the the two years are related you know they they build on one another and, but nonetheless, next spring, we'll get started on the revision and the update with our road agent, who will have had the winter uh, and this fall to better familiarize himself with our roads. And Church Street is on it. Okay, now I don't know what I'm gonna do, too, with Stratford Regional, was tr is trying to figure out why it wasn't there, because they've got, I mean, we're looking at, uh, I think it was done right around the time they were doing the 10-year road plan. Because it's what do you only mean done. It was re. Um, it's only been. It doesn't make. In it the doesn't, last really doesn't years. make any difference. The, the, they still got all the road. All the roads. It's, yes, it's it comes from a database of roads. So how this segment of road got. And there was question of whether or not Ross Road was on it at one point. So I didn't know if that. I, I don't have it in front of me, but I I think yes, Ross Road is there. Okay. Um. It's been a couple weeks since I've we, been. You know, we'll, we'll also, when we update it, just as we did the first time, we'll have a public hearing, okay. or at least a public information session. You know, we didn't really update it per se, so we're just kind of, you know, barreling on. But Moving forward. Yeah. But next year when we do it, we'll, we'll, we'll have a public information session. I'm not sure all the roads that are on the long-term plan will make it that long, but so I'm glad to hear that revisions will be done down the line, or hopefully be done. Um, <laughs> what? Now, you said Washington. I went over there and looked at something the other day. Does it call it broke over there? Church? There's yeah. one missing. The there's one. Well, no, there's a piece of pipe broke, water coming out of the ground. On, I think it's Washington Street. When it, it's I don't called know. it between two storm frames or something at the top of the hill. I'm not familiar with what you were talking about. Is this near your house? There was a town from here. Yeah, we went up there the other day with Wayne and I. Wayne said something there with the pipe broke, so I went and looked at the situation to see if it's something that could be fixed. And if something's going to need to be fixed, however, when. Yeah, we would need, yes. Yeah, we have to, we have to fix it. We have to cut the hot top and put a patch in, put a new pipe in there, but the pipe's broke halfway between the two storm drains, so. I don't know if that's my Um. Okay. What days are Wayne, is Wayne here this week? Well, on Wednesday and Wednesday we have plans to do the bridge on Oak Street, clean that brush up so they can see the signs and keep the cars in the road instead of going into the middle of the road. So, you want to meet Friday? Thursday or Friday. Friday, well, we Friday, Friday, Friday morning, morning we got to meet already, so. Inspection oh, at 8.30. Right. And I don't know how long that's going to last. Okay. I mean, it, whatever. I mean, Thursday, Friday, we can fit it in sometime, either one of them days, I guess. Okay. But that, I did look at that Washington Street issue when it is. Okay. Now, on, you talked earlier about guardrails on Pine Street. Were there guardrails at one point on Willie Street, and are they going back up? There were no guardrails on Willie okay. Street, so there's nothing there. They're not going back up. Okay, because that's very steep and very close to the school. <laughs> and it was steeper. 
Okay. Just makes me a little nervous. It's not as steep actually now, but right. right. It was deeper before. Um, and in regards to the DOT testing for CDLs, Seacoast Ready Care does do them, and they're required by the state for even bus drivers and not just truck drivers. So, so I'm sorry, Seacoast Ready Care does the does the DOT physicals that are required by the state. Oh, okay, but and for a fee. For a fee, but do you, know they, what that, do you happen to know what that fee is? I don't know. My previous employer um, was a school, and they required us all to have um, flu shots and all of us to have DOT training and physicals to drive their vehicles. And they supplied. But they supplied them through Seacoast Ready Care because they had a contract with Seacoast Ready Care. Because they made it mandatory, so. But flu shots are not mandatory, so that's why we're not. But, but, but flu but shots, they are mandatory. But the Medicare, I think the DOT I mean, is $85. I don't know. The yes. The what? $85. But if you have a contract with Seacoast Ready Care, we probably don't have enough business to <laughs> warrant it. They might do that. And right, thank you. Um, if we name, I heard the possibility of naming a field after somebody who was important to the town. There are lots of people that are important to the town. I don't want to diminish anybody's name. So maybe we can make it like um, a joint name or whatever. Well, right? they can say no. If she was, she, she was young when she passed away, she, she, they can say no. I just thought it would be nice. So, it's up to the trustees. It's their field. Yeah. I can't do. I can't do like the only basketball court we have is at the school, so I can't rename. Well, that. I mean, it it poses a you know a, a, an underlying issue that there are lots of people that are important to us in our lives that we love very much, and how how you know if we, even if they're very important to the town, how we try to recognize them and not others. I mean, it, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't, those are the questions that I, that come to mind. You know, and I don't want one family to feel slated because they exactly, did not get exactly. that honor. Or didn't, or didn't know somebody who, right, yeah, I understand. So those are good things to mm -hmm. keep in mind. Nancy, did you have something? Yes. Um, do you not need a public hearing to increase the transfer fees? That's correct. Such the short. select board can do it itself. I checked in the ordinance. On such short notice. You're going to have a lot of. What's the short notice? Well, we it's by January. That's that's two months. That's but, November December, right? So you put out that notice right away, so I can uh, copy yeah. into Facebook. Because yeah. last time you did, we had a public hearing last time. I'm. No, no, I'm not saying for or against, but. There was a public hearing last time when there was a rate change for the transfer station. It's always a question whether we seat. have to, whether no, we no. choose to. You know, it's they need they needed, you know, unfortunately no. we're at the time no. of year where they yeah. kind of need a decision. Do you think let me ask you this question, do you think do you think it's too much? I'm not asking what you think other people would think. I'm asking you. You don't want to I personally yes. Would you rather pay per bag? No. No. See, here's the thing. So not everybody, not everybody uses the trans. Not everybody uses the transfer station, correct? Correct. So, and but the transportation doesn't pay for itself. That means that everybody is subsidizing that part of the transfer station that is not covered by the fees. So that's that's the we're trying to get it closer so that the people who are using the transfer station. Are, are helping to defray the cost. But it's still, even with even with this increase to twenty dollars, they're still we're not we're not going to come close to covering the expenses of the transfer station. So, so those of us who are using it, and I'm one of them, are asking the rest of the town, including people who never use it, to subsidize that piece of the transfer station. Do other towns come in level funded on their transfer stations? They so, actually make money. That's because they recycle everything. But they, well, the point is they make money, but they we don't. But but you have to start somewhere, and you have to start with I just starting to recycle. More that's my personal opinion. I, I'm just not for it. Yeah. 
I understand. I'm just curious whether it was. It's you. the. I'll get back to that. It's the only thing we really got that we get for nothing for town. I mean, we don't have any students in the school, but we still support the school. Right. Yes. Well, that's why I wanted to. Even though the discount. school is run by their own money, the uh, transfer station probably doesn't make money, but it's also it's our last benefit for the town that we don't. It's still, pay. I would say, it's still a benefit. At twenty bucks a pop. It's oh yeah. It's still a benefit. Oh yeah. It, it's you're gonna. You know, if you were paying for bags somewhere else, you'd be paying probably more than twenty bucks a year. Oh, definitely. So, so it's still a benefit. That's the which is the point. Mm -hmm. It's we're not. That's the only point I'm bringing up. Yeah. The cost isn't the issue. Not for him. It's <laughs> right. So I'm going to hear it when I get home tonight. But you know, I'm going to make this point as well. I mean, you know, the point of being a public citizen is that. You know, there there are things that we do for the general public good. Oh, yeah. So, so so I could use that argument and say, you know, those the people who are subsidizing it are doing that for the general public good for the rest of them. And the same is true for the school, and the mm -hmm. same is true for. I mean, I don't pay. I I manage. I maintain my own driveway, my own road into my house. The town doesn't do anything to that. You know, they don't plow it. We plow it. They don't grade it. We rebrand it. I, you know, I don't object. That's just, that's just the way it is. I've never had a child, so I've never had a child in the public school. But I consider public education to be an overall, overwhelming public good, and I feel that we should all support public education and the children. We need our citizens to be well educated. We need them to be uh, responsible, to grow into responsible citizens who know how to vote. So. So that's, I'll get off my soapbox and just say that you know nobody wants to pay more, right? I don't want to pay. I don't want to pay more, but I still think that the it's defensible. Twenty bucks. It's defensible. That's my rationale. Yes, sir. With the increase in costs there, um, in order to help close the gap, have you considered alternative methods like the p other towns that make many? How do they make money? Um, they, they have to recycle more, and they are extremely stringent on what you throw away. I want you, go, I want you to go down to the town of Lee and go through their transfer station and tell me if you want to separate every single piece. I would be willing to. I come from yes. um, Vermont so, that just passed their no, um, no food waste, which means you can't even throw a chicken bone in your trash can now. You have to now put it in a tub and take it to your transfer station. Oh. As of July 1st, any fat, chicken bones, any food waste compost. that can't go in your compost has to go in a bucket and go to your transfer station. Which they compost, yeah. Um, and so for me, $20 a year for two vehicles is $40 a year, and that's a little too much for me to pay. I'm thinking when we're talking about this, I'm just going to get one sticker in the future mm -hmm. and not two. And... Um, then you're going to lose some people like that. And I mean, we have a household of five. And once a week, I bring one bag of trash. And the rest is recycling over there. And some weeks, it's not even a bag. So for me, the pay by the bag would be beneficial. Yeah, I like paper bag. I think that's the best. Personally, I think that's the best approach. And you know, the board has talked about it. We just we, we don't have the time right now to, to get that going for next year. But and I, I understand the. You know, the $40 is, is, is mm -hmm. a lot, but, you know, like you say, you could just put it on one vehicle and that would that would take care of that. I've always had just one vehicle. So, you know. General information. One of your worst places is Wentworth Douglas. They don't recycle. Everything goes in trash. They don't dump it with us. No, 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 no. But I, we're just saying that they, they're they're big offenders right there. So at least we're doing something. Oh yes. We, oh sure. We do sure. do a lot of. Oh yeah, we do all. Yeah. Oh yeah. But they're the worst offenders. Oh, medical facilities are the worst. You have no idea how much plastic I throw out at work every, every day. It, it actually breaks our heart as as employees because we're irresponsible citizens. <laughs> yes. The world. We, because oh, the headrest covers and the baggies and the tubes mm -hmm. and the everything. So. And we should be looking maybe at businesses in town. Are they? They're not. They're not. They don't use it. They don't use it. 
thinking about this is the other thing that comes to mind is that there's a conflict a little bit between changing um, you're asking landlords to put in dumpsters if they have more than four units or um, if or trash cans but then you're also asking them to pay as part of the whole greater good for the community and their tax dollars to cover the transfer station. That just seems like a conflict of their funds to me. Well, that's, that's what I was driving at, that mm -hmm. there are people who don't use the transfer station who are subsidizing the, the gap between the expense of running the transfer station and the revenue that we do get. And when I did the analysis, you know, we get, I think even with this, about half. So half of the expenses are being covered, which means that you know, the rest is spread out among all of the taxpayers, whether they're people who pay you know, for private service, whether they're people who are in the village and have a dumpster, but their landlord is, is providing it. You know, so, so we're trying to make it so that it's more, uh, you know, more user fee. And if you look at the surrounding communities, we don't think that the $20 is, uh, is out of whack with what you might pay in other communities. So. So, any uh, were you ready to answer non-public? Did you have any hand raised? Oh, I was just going to say, I think it's a deal. Yep. Okay, so there's one. Yeah, I can't you. comment, so I won't say nothing. Pardon? <laughs> I can't comment, so I won't say anything. <laughs> I know what I pay in some of the woods, so. Well, can I ask you how much you pay? It's $1.75 a bag. And so over a year, how much? We don't have a transfer station, so I have to pay extra to go transfer my construction debris. So roughly a year, how much are you paying? Where do you, you, where do you bring it? I have to go to Turnkey Landfill with my construction debris, so you have to pay the bigger fee of $165 a pickup truck load. And and, nor, and you're normal every week? I mean, how many bags? I and You don't have to answer. I recycle. Yeah. I use a bag every other week because I have a trip compact. That's still more than 20 bucks a year. It, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. And I, but I don't use the paper bag. I, buy, I got a private company, and I'm paying so much a week anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So I can get rid of my construction debris without having to go through that other extra expense. And I still have to pay for everything in yeah. town anyway. But so it's it's a win-win. In your case, twenty bucks is not a lot of money. However, that's not my choice to make. No, I understood. I was just curious. Right. What, but you know, with the but I mean, they're always going through the same headache. Yeah, I mean you can't. It's it's an expense, and not everybody. You you, know, you just so you're trying to sort of a match between. It's like building permits. You know, we we ask for fees for building permits because we have a building inspector who reviews them. So we don't want to. You know, we want to as much as possible to tie the cost of the building of the building permit to what we're paying for the building inspector. Not everybody uses it, so you, you try to make it so that it's sort of user based to the extent that you can. All right, with that. Shall we go into non-public? What do you mean in non-public? Marines of personnel and veterans exception. Okay, I will second that. Roll call. Jody. Aye. Suzanne. Yes. So I'll give you the agenda. Salman, thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming to work. But George, the buck seventy-five is also you get curved side pickup. <laughs> Not everywhere, though. No, no, for summer's work. Yes. No, yeah, get curbside pickup. Get curbside pickup. Probably the highest tax bill in the state. <laughs>